Okay, cool. So what's up, man? So Jay, did you get any, uh, so you didn't get any of that effect from the hurricane or anything? Not even a cloud. Really? That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. That's we're great. happy. We just, we're still recovering from uh, Hurricane Sally from two years ago. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. The one that yeah, so you my, got your boat, uh, yeah. your boat got boat's fixed and pool. all that? Yep, boat's out of my pool and <laughs> fixed. <laughs> nice. so, God. Spending a lot of time on it. It's, it's, been, nice. it's been a good summer. Nice. Those pictures are crazy. <laughs> First of all, the picture of you out in the deck was crazy, or on the dock. Yeah. And then the boat right. in your pool was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only you yeah, would, yeah. only you would do it, like handle that like that. Like everybody else would probably be hunkering down and trying to like get out of town. You're like, nope, I'm just gonna wait. Yeah, it's too late. By the time we figured out, we maybe maybe we should leave as the water was coming in the house. It's like, well, oh well, <laughs> screw it. Yeah, get, get two stories. <laughs> just roll your pants up and just do exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or pull your pants down. Yeah. Both, yeah, maybe. Yeah, take them off completely. Exactly. <laughs> so, what have you guys been up to, man? I, I literally haven't talked to you two probably in God, a decade or so. I haven't seen. I can't remember the last time I talked to you guys direct. I mean, we've texted and that kind of stuff, but like, when's the last time we've even spoken like like this, like face to face? Matt, I know Matty Green had his retirement at your house. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that's, and that was like back in. I don't know. I don't know when that was. Or, uh, I, mean, I was Randy, living. You, I think I was living there, so it would have been like 15, 16 time frame. Yeah, yeah. I think I talked to you when you were applying for your job that you have now. When you were. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I put it down as a reference. You needed a, uh, like a recommendation or something. Yeah, 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 that's right. I'm like, fuck that. You ain't getting one from me. <laughs> this guy sucks, dude. You don't want this guy. <laughs> Luckily, I, I got in anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's no, been a while. Business. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Um. Yeah, so I just want to get you guys on here because, like I said in our text, I know um, when I thought when I think of like the 17th in my era, you know, everybody's got their era. Everybody's been there at different times and stuff. But when I was there, you guys were like, you know, the two superintendents that were like that made a, a, a difference, made like a, an impression on me. So I just wanted I figured we get all three on here and just start talking about that experience, about stuff, getting you guys there and um well, Matt, you and I go way back. You, yeah, you were in, you were in a tech school class ahead of me, right? Behind you, behind me. Okay, yeah. and yeah. then, um, so I, I've known Matt for since the beginning, since you know it all started. And then you used to come over to DM and, hit, and hang out with us quite a bit. Um, and then Brandy, I think you and I met at the seventeenth when you got there, didn't you? Or were you, were, were you ever meet before that? I don't know if we ever did. No, I, I, I met um, some of them back before when I was uh, at Shaw. Um, the, uh, I was up there for something I can't remember, and, and uh, I, mean, I ran into Jazz when I think when Jazz was tech sergeant, and they had a they were up there for a cast cast trip or something. And those, 100 years ago, some of the guys, yeah, some of the guys from the 17th was up there, and that's, that's kind of when I first first ran into to anybody from the 17th. That's um, but yeah, because you, you know back then you you had you had the SF side. And then you had the ranger side and right. nobody really seen a whole lot of, of, of the ranger side. Um, or well, that's actually, the most. Oh, good. Yeah. No, no, no. Catch you. No, I, I was, that was, it was always like, um, you, you kind of would run into some of the SF guys every now and then. Um, but the, the, you know, back then, uh, pre G Watt, the, the ranger side was always Idris and like, it was kind of their own little, little world. Yeah. Matt, that that brings up a good point. Like you, even before all that, you were like the ver were you the first guy or one of the first guys to be at the seven twentieth as a tech P? Oh, uh, I, I was the second guy at the seven twentieth. Okay, two thousand three. No, who's yeah, who's up before you? Uh, the first guy was uh, Kyle Hurst. Was actually there. Oh, okay, that's right. Yep. Yep. So uh, Kyle's the one here. They, yeah, he's the one that they created that position. He was the first guy there. Then I took over for him, and then prior to that, I did a uh, I did a stint at the twenty first STS. That's right. That's what I thought. I, I thought yeah, that they, they the first ones that actually had an STS. Yeah, back yeah. in night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, back when I mean, you got had guys like Marty and stuff over at the two four. Uh, the two one decided Gary Jones was running a fires program there, uh, TACP, and he was like, "Hey, I want to bring you know 
let, let's bring a couple tech P's over and put one guy on each team just to run flyers, see how that works out. So it was uh, myself, uh, a guy named Todd McCabe, and then, um, uh, shoot, I'm trying to think of his name. It'll kind of be here in a second, but uh, three of us went over there and, and supposed to be for a year. I don't think we did a full year there, probably about six months, six, eight months. And then, uh, then ACC pulled us back because they were trying to make a, they were trying to make a permanent positions, but yeah. ACC wouldn't let go of the uh, bellets at the time. So, JJ That's a tough road to hoe. What's that? JJ Salisbury was the third guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a tough road. I mean, you like you guys pretty much paved the way for what is now Tech P's at STS's. You know, that was it was all kind of it wasn't really like kind of like you were alluding to. It wasn't real like uh, official, but it was. Yeah, but you had paved that way. You know, I mean, you kind of showed them well, what, what you guys what like you nice, could do. And... I mean, what was cool about it is, you know, they, they brought us over there. You kind of formed those relationships yeah. Um, with those guys, with, you know, Captain Staha, who was, you know, a Sto at the time, prior Tac P, jumped into Grenada. Right. Um, he was the team leader. Uh, a lot of the guys that ended up becoming chiefs in the, in the combat control career field were at the 2-1 on my on blue team. Um, so it was, it was just, it worked out to be like, a good time to get in there because all those guys had become E eight E nines, O sixes down the road. So when we started talking about doing it permanently, you know, you'd already kind of formed and the time that I spent at the seven twentieth opened up a lot of doors and introduced me to a lot of folks that became influential in the special tactics world that were very, you know, all about guys coming over. So it was it was, it, it was really more of a timing thing, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean also, your per- the personalities there too. I mean, you guys, you know, h- had you sucked, you know, they probably would have been like, "Eh, we're going to take a pass on tag piece." But since you guys kicked so much ass there, they were like, "Yes, we have we've experienced these guys. They did a really great job for us. We need to, you know, make this. It's a good idea to have guys that are ex- like as far as the cast role. You know, you aspire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fire my case, it was ninety percent personality, ten percent performance. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are, you guys crushed it, man. Um, well, uh, so that that kind of brings up the the initially the the soft side. Always thought of the tack peas yeah. back then as just to run their programs, right? right. Yeah, th- th- there wasn't a whole lot of operator slots uh, initially, so like those guys really had to to uh, to prove themselves to, to get on teams and stuff like that. Yeah. I think even even uh, Klukas, um was was Klukas the first one to go up two four or was Nate already there? No, Jim Heron was the first. So Jim Heron was there. He, Jim's the one who started the program. He came over from JCU, stood that program up. Marty came in second, and then then it was like Nate, Eddie, guys like that. So, yeah, but they, again, they were they another were, good crew. Yeah, I mean, yeah, great, like solid operators that was restricted to running programs. Yeah. You know? When did that switch over? I don't. Even, I don't know next to nothing about the twenty four. So like, when did it switch from? Uh, I know we've always had a fires presence there, and we I think we still do. But when did when did it switch from letting, them letting guys go on missions and going down to teams oh, and that kind of stuff? You guys remember anything? Or, well, was yeah, I was gonna say there's two. There's actually two. So there was a, when the guys were in Iraq and their fires guys, they started letting go out with the Brits as operators. Uh, so they started deploying those guys. So those guys were working. Uh, your, your guys, your Donovan Husses and your Alex Millers started oh, going yeah, out yeah. on target with TF Black. Um, so those guys were, um, you know, those, those were like the first dudes and then, um, they, they kind of mixed them in every now and then, but I think officially Brandy, you probably know this. I think it was, it was like 2009, 2010. I don't know. It was, it was towards the end of my career. Um, might've been a little bit before that. I have to ask Kirk Newman was actually the first tech P to go through green team. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And, and go through there and then, then Brett Barbie and, and other guys like that. So, yep. But, and I think I want to say that was, I know it was the late two thousands. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That was cool when I heard about those. Those two guys are kicking. They kicked so much ass. I mean, that was really awesome. Those guys were able to do that. That kind of paved a way for anybody who wanted to go in there. Um, yeah, that was cool. That was very cool. And uh, what were you? So you were getting ready to retire at that point, Matt? Yeah, I was. Yeah, we'd already moved over to Asoc. Um, so the seventeenth had that was that started when Brandy was uh, was still there. Yeah, yeah, and then um, we kind of saw that, and then obviously, you know, so we we went over to Asoc in two thousand seven, I want to say two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Um, Kronk was in charge, right? Yeah, Kronk was in yeah. charge. So that was um, yeah, because it was after Bell left. So it was probably two thousand eight. 
Okay. And maybe. Anyway. Uh, it's easily know. Google. We can Google it. it exactly. Sure yeah. When it's yeah, just and then, then obviously the next step would become an STS. Uh, that happened, I think, in the 2011 is when they became an STS. Okay. The 17th yeah. STS. And then, um, and now, I mean, I'm sure you guys are, I know Brandy's tracking, but now they're a, a full fledged, you know, SMU underneath the uh, 724th. Yeah, it's awesome. So, That's really cool. Yeah. It's gone, it's come so far, like through the, through like when well, we got in like early 90s. So <clears throat> that whole decade, um, I, would you say that like it has exponentially grown since you and the three of us have gotten out or at least gotten to the end of our careers than that whole time we were in? I mean, it was, it was almost like we were kind of like um, uh, just grinding away, trying to get you know one step closer to where they are now. But it seems like well, at a point they just kind of like catapulted out and have become well, more ingrained with the units and more, you know, more, more recognized for what the 17th is as opposed to, you know, what us, what we were trying to do, you know, everything that we, we always wanted when we were there, as far as manning and, and, and uh, all the extra slots and stuff, it is there. And that's, I guess that's a good thing for, you know, me staying in this area. I've got to see the, the, the go back periodically and, and see what all that, that they've like, every time somebody take, takes over with, whether it was uh Serpa or a Matt Davis or someone that, 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 uh, was around when I, when I was around, you know, they, they always take me to the squadron and, and like, you wouldn't even rec- like they've changed the, the, the layout of the squadron. Like you wouldn't yeah. even recognize it anymore, but the, the manning slots that we always wanted, you know, we always wanted rigors. We always wanted uh, our own medical stuff. Like all that stuff is there. Like yeah. it, it's, it's, it's so cool. Yeah. It, it's, you know, and good on them. It's, it's yeah. Like, you, yeah. You know, just how I, you know, I, I think a lot of what it was, and Brian, I didn't mean to cut you off there. You yep. know, is, is you know, y'all, you guys, is performance uh, downrange really is what you know. OEF, I would say OEF was probably the catalyst that you know, and guys going down OEF, OIF going out there kicking ass, um, you know, just killing it on target, and and then you know, getting to where ST was like, oh man, these guys bring a lot more to the game. We want them yeah. to be you know, a part of our arsenal. Uh, it's kind of how I looked at it, you know, and, and guys, we had a lot of huge, a lot of big advocates, guys like Michael Monica, you know, chief of Monica, who was the group chief at the time, who yeah. were like, hey, man, we need these, you know, we need to bring these guys over and need to be on the, uh, a part of our, you know, part of our units because, you know, we're we're force multipliers in a force multiplier unit. So, right. you know, but like I said, I mean, it was it was, you know, you guys early on before ever I ever got to the 17th that went out there. I mean, we can go all the way back to the guys performance, but I really say OEF, OIF, man, was what? Where they were like, "Yep, come on over," and then it yeah. just, yeah, it just started growing. Like Brandy can say, "It's funny." I have a, I have a green book inside where I wrote down. It, it was 2008, as a matter of fact, where I wrote down the first Manning, what it, I thought it was, should look like for the 17th, and um, and it's funny that it actually came to fruition. Like, yeah, and I, I don't want to talk Manning because like, you know where they're at now and stuff, but uh, but it was you know, one guy per platoon, X number of guys per battalion. I mean, it was just, and it racked and stacked almost all the way down. Like Brandy said. You know the, the support side of it, and we, I mean, you guys know, growing up in attack, the regular conventional attack piece side, <laughs> yeah. stuff that you know we would have. If you'd have told me, you know, 20 years ago that there'd be a attack piece squadron, or almost all the attack piece squadron that have you know 20,000 square foot gyms, physical therapists, you know, right. weight trainers, um, just all these different, you know, you know psychologists at, at their beck and call, just all this stuff. I'd have told you you were nuts, man. Yeah, I know. And, you know. You think about it now they all go through jump school, and and when, when we would, when we grew up in the career field, it was two different career fields. Yeah, you had, they had the jumpers and non jumpers, and and they they the non jumpers. Well, it was almost three if you want to put it that way. It was like guys that were kind of in the soft realm, and then you had the jumpers, and then you had like the non jumpers, and like I always thought. I never got, I never understood that animosity because, you know, I, I don't want to get all cheesy and be like, well, the same mission, blah, blah, blah. But like you, you can be as high speed as you want to be. You know, I know there's plenty of conventional dudes who were at like armor units who were the baddest asses around, you know, best shots and like best way in shape and everything. So um, yeah, the, the only thing that would keep anybody back would be themselves. But Matt, you were talking about the early, um, early GWAT. The coolest thing I remember about you is not the coolest thing, but this is one in pertaining to that. There's a lot of other cool stuff, you know, that in Korea that were very cool. Uh, no, but this, so this GWAT thing, you you were SF your whole career. Like you went to the 720th and you were like deployed with the with the SF all that time. And then they're like, okay, we want him to be the superintendent of the 17th. 
And before you would take over, you made a point to deploy with a Ranger battalion. I think you deployed with the so, first bat, right? So I'll, I'll let you in on that. So we initially hired Matt for R&D. Oh, really? Yeah, but see, Matt screwed around and got promoted. So Oh, that okay, okay. So, but when he first came to the squadron, knowing that that he would be my replacement, um, he went out, went out with first bat and third bat, didn't you? I, I no, I only deployed with first bat as with a platoon. I mean, yeah. I deployed in support of the Rangers um, on other another occasion, but it was as a fires, basically running a fires desk TF seventeen. But now the first one was actually was downrange on target with uh, uh yeah, you know, with, yeah, with Matt went down as a. As a platoon JTAC, I thought that was the coolest That's thing, man. That because yeah. there's a lot of guys, and I don't, I'm not going to call anybody out, but like, because because we all have different paths. But I thought that was one of the coolest things that, and before you, you, I, I remember talking about it. I, I maybe I'm misremembering it, but I remember you saying something like, "How could I ever take over the squadron if I don't even know what the mission is?" And I was like, "That's awesome." That was, and yeah, we I, like hundred. Was, trust me, I would have liked to have gone earlier. You know, when I first got to the 17, for but, sure. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm not going to jump in and, and take somebody else's place. And it, it right. just happened to work out that there was they needed a guy. Yeah. First, that was short a guy. And um, so, yeah, so it worked out. But it, it does. I mean, I think that's a huge factor. You, you know, you, and I hope they, you know, this is match like talking, but I hope that they eventually get to the point where in order to run the 17th, you have to have that background. Yeah. You have to have that experience because I, I feel like you're missing something and you, you cannot, you can make great, you know, you can make leadership calls and you can make calls on finance and budgets and everything where the squadron's going to go, but to, to sit there and, and criticize a guy or punish a guy or, you know, try to mentor a guy and you've never walked in his shoes. I just don't, that's just, to me, that's just, you know, it's not right. Yeah. yeah that, there's, there has been a few um, superintendents after us that, uh, Talking to the guys there, there now. Even even Davis that that weren't really associated. They're kind of loosely associated with the seventeenth. Uh, kind of did some soft stuff, but they he, they they took over afterwards, and it, it was. And they'd be the first one to tell you it was it was wasn't it, the guys had a hard time accepting them because they didn't have that experience. Also, um, it just doesn't translate like that. Like. The SF is a great mission and that's a, that's a cool job and it's all, you know, all that stuff, but the, the mentality and the culture doesn't translate over to the 17th. So you're trying to apples and oranges. It, it's totally. Yeah. You're trying to put, you know, all these round pegs and these square holes and it just doesn't work out. One more thing you, you said, I, and this is another thing I remember tell me this is true because this, that was back when we were doing 90 day rotations. You said you did like a hundred missions in like 90 days, like yeah. every day, you either went out at least on one mission, and sometimes you did like follow-ons to some some other. Yeah, we did. We did. I know it, a couple on a couple occasions we did four targets in one night. And that was <laughs> that was crazy. four follow-on missions. That wasn't that wasn't. Hey, we're gonna go hit four targets. It was hit a target, then you know get re. Hey, okay, another target just dropped. Yep. You know, as they're collecting the intel, and yeah. It, yeah. So there was times where we went we went in and out of the gates, and uh, they're diving back you know, three four times a night. That's awesome. And because then we started rolling over to day missions too. So a lot of times we'd roll over off a night mission straight into a day mission. So, yeah, and I and I actually came home on emergency leave during that time frame too. And still, still like, did I think 100 missions. Ended up doing like 118 <laughs> missions in 90 days, and I, I had over 100 myself. So that's crazy, man. Yeah, that's awesome. It was awesome. It was best experience of my life. Oh awesome. God, yeah. I mean, can you imagine? Just think if you wouldn't have had that deployment under your belt and you took over. How you know? I I can't imagine the kind of catch up you would have had to play to, you know, lead the squadron. If, if you hadn't have done that deployment, you know, it's just, yeah. I mean, yeah, it definitely, it definitely adds context to it. You know, yeah. when you guys were doing the Merrill missions, the Merrill and the Darby missions in Afghanistan, you know, I was over there. Um, I don't know why it was a 2010, but you know, those guys are coming back smoked, absolutely yeah. smoked, you know, after being out 36, you know, 72 hours. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, that's where it really, that I understood that context when you're, Seeing guys like TJ and 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 those Maddie and those guys, and I mean, they, oh, you know, yeah. their eyes are sucking their head, and it's like <laughs> they haven't slept in three, four days. They've been controlling airstrikes twenty four seven. So, yeah. so yeah, man. I mean, those are the kind of things. Like I said, until you actually walk in those guys' shoes, it, it really. I was like, okay, now now I get it. Now yeah. I think that's partly why. And Brandy was the same way. You know, when guys were home, you know, I don't, you know, unless you've got stuff to do, why are you at the squadron? You know, right. Because you know how the training cycle was. 
So even yeah. when you're oh, yeah. home, you're still training, you're going TDY, you've got to maintain your currencies. So it's like, I, I never had an issue with dudes, you know, unless they were, unless they were really gone, you know, like, like certain individuals we had that were just, you know, take <laughs> off for weeks on end. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, it's like, why, why you know, and, and that's yeah. another thing. So as a, as somebody who's, you know, never been there, never done that. And you're getting on it. Hey, why, why aren't these guys here? Why aren't they in uniform? Why aren't they, you know, that, that's just, that's it. That's hypocrisy in my mind. Right. It's right. Ignorance, ignorance and hypocrisy. Yeah, because it wasn't like if you were going on another deployment, it was like it's coming. Like you're yeah, you, whatever battalion you're in, as soon as those other two battalions deploy, you're next. So it wasn't yeah. it was you knew yeah. you were going somewhere, yeah. you know. Or you know, hey, you know, somebody gets hurt, and yeah, guess what? <laughs> right. You're, you're going. I right know we're now. so undermanned. That, yeah, or yeah, you're exactly. staying. I mean, if you guys remember, we had guys doing they would do multiple rotations. Yeah, I, mean, Mark, yeah. I know Mark yeah. Foster did that a few times. Yeah, like, yeah. Obviously, you know, it's like, oh. Yeah, I mean, he's probably I, got the I most. Tell Mark Foster story a, a lot because he broke his back, had major knee surgery, uh, and never missed a deployment. Yeah, like he, he fell off the roof. Like they they, <laughs> they fast roped the 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 helicopter mistook the 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 brown rooftop as their uh, HLZ to where they was going to put him in, and he was a third off the rope, and he did what he's supposed to. He run away from the rope. And it turns out they were on top of a roof and he, and he went off the roof and broke his back. And, and then the next rotation, he was in Iraq and fell down the st some stairs and, and, and tore his ACL. So, but the kid never missed a, a, a rotation, never, never missed a rotation. I, I would, I would, I don't know how many other people have, but he's, he had some of the most, I mean, I don't know what his number is, but if I had to guess, I would say he's the most deployed. Like, I, I don't know whoever, some, there might be somebody who has more than him, but he had like, I mean, over like well into double digits, you know, oh, not yeah. more, you know, just crazy stuff. I was just giving it the other day because he, uh, we were at Marana one time and uh, we were testing out those um, yep. Silinx he headsets. You remember that? And yeah, yeah. Yeah, he came down, his ears were just bleeding out. You know? yeah. We all had them. I don't know why his were bleeding, but man, it was. Because <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. foster, that's why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Like the first time we said, I forgot what new laser range finder we had you know thermal laser range finder we sit out with the guys I, I don't even know what it was or maybe it was a rover rover six or something they're like thirty thousand dollars each and you know Ro foster's first rope in he breaks it you know because he's got it on his side and he like rolls on his hip and shatters the screen and, uh, like, like he's gonna just hit the ground and then pop up and lay something yeah, or... yeah it's like come on mark <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> the, the, the the funny story with him is Right before we were heading to Iraq the first time, when he printed out every, everybody's map for in case he it, it happens like um, Band of Brothers and they land because we we're supposed to jump in. So originally we were supposed to take down Saddam International Airport, yeah. and uh, remember we had all, we had all three range battalions and then two two battalions from eighty second, and and we were going to do this massive uh, jump into there. And uh, Mark was afraid he was going to land somewhere that. He wasn't going to land with his company. So he wanted everybody's products with him. And he had a stack of paper, <laughs> laminated paper this this tall. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm, I don't know where I'm going to land. So I want to be able to be effective as soon as I hit the ground. I'm like, <laughs> hey, good for him. We'd all been screwed if, we'd, if, if anyone yeah, had to like, land somewhere else. Yeah, all right. Exactly. <laughs> and then he wanted that jump so bad. And I paired him with, with Tommy Case. And they were the only – Airland package. Oh man, on the mission. <laughs> you know that's the thing that, that brings up a good point. Like you talk about all these guys, and uh, it really is luck of the draw about what you get to do and who gets the who gets these certain missions and who gets to do what. I mean, it's like you just never know, and you know everybody kind of looks at looks at all, and not to diminish their uh, their you know stuff, but it's like man. If if it had just been a couple of months later, then another dude would have been in that guy's position right. and done the what he got, you know, got to do what he got to do, you know, or whatever. But like, how do they choose like third battalion to jump in a you know, rhino, or how do they choose Brandy, your guys to jump into Iraq? And it's just like it's so weird how there aren't a, there aren't an abundance of things like that. But I don't know, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Like it, it's it just seems yeah, like I've been, the right place, I've been, right time for a lot of this stuff. I've been kind of asked this before is like because um someone was saying aren't you glad that so-and-so was on that mission i'm like any any one of us at that time any of the three of us here would any mission either one of us would have been on 
it, it, it'd been the same result. Like we, we all would have, would have stepped up and done the exact same thing. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, I think that goes to the level of training that, that our guys had that, uh, you can, you know, put, put someone here and it, it doesn't matter who's there. Sure. It, it, whoever, whoever's on that mission is going to do, it's going to do a great job. So it's, it's, it's not really, you know, waiting for the, um, your, saving your A player for the, for, for the greatest right. hardest mission. It, it just, you just pick whoever's available and that's the one's going to go. That's a good point. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it just, regardless of the timeline, you're going to get a good guy just by, by the nature of the unit. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I think that was what was unique about the 17th. But I will say on the Ranger side is, I mean, we, we had a, you, you always knew your guys that struggled a little bit, but I don't think we ever really selected certain individuals to be a part of certain missions. I mean, no, for sure. It's like, hey, you need right. a body. You knew that anybody you called up, any, anyone you picked was, you know, just like you said, plug and play. Yeah. Um, which was very unique to that, to that unit because everybody was, I mean, obviously it's, you know, it's a typical deal. Everybody was trained to a standard. Everybody performed to a certain standard. We held guys to that standard, yeah. um, you know, which you know, unfortunately a lot of times across the curve field before that, that wasn't necessarily the case. A mm-hmm. lot of people got drug along that probably should have been dropped off. But yeah. Uh, yeah, any any mission that came up, regardless of who it was in support of, what the objective was, it was like, yep, pick a guy, throw him in there. And, and 99 out of 100 times, the guy you succeeded. Right, right. I think it's even better now. I think those guys, there's a dude that I work with right now who just came from the 17th, um, Matt Fullwood. Um, So yeah, I get a little more, I get a little insight on, you know, how it is there, but it seems like the guys now, they are even better than we are. You know, it's like, it's so crazy how they have, you know, rose risen to like such a higher level than even we were at. Um, You know, they're, they're just, I, my humble opinion, I think they're probably a little more squared away than we are. I think whoever's fault it is, you know, whether it be, you know, the situation we were in, I don't think it has anything to do with our personality or, you know, our, our desire to be at that level, but these guys have just, they, they, I think the 17 just gets exponentially better as the years go on, you know, which is great. I think it's so awesome. And they have more leeway. If a guy isn't quite cutting the mustard, they can, you know, they have a little more ease of getting them out. Oh yeah. Yeah. They got, they got got more money to train. They've got more bodies. They like where we, we had to do, you know, everybody had a had an additional duty that took <laughs> right fifty percent of your time when you yeah. like it, it was. I mean, how many squatter suits also ran the stand about program and and all the other <laughs> right uh, or the so, training NCO or whatever? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I, yeah, I think I had. I think Matt had training while I had stand about, and which was, but that's a testament to you too because you saw the 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 value in higher level guys taking those additional duty so the younger guys who were actually going to war or actually fighting at that time you know it, you you left you left the guys who were whose job it was to fight to fight and train to fight you know i mean when you guys were younger we all kind of took the brunt of it when we were younger guys but like as you it was i just thought it was commendable the way when you guys got older and you got in those leadership positions you kind of were like you put you ran a lot of defense you you know you were screened for a lot of the stuff that came from the higher levels and i thought that was that was awesome that was really good we gave the guys a lot of time to hone their skills and get a lot better at, at doing yeah. what they focus need to on do. doing their job yeah yeah for sure yeah going back to kind of what you said you know the way i was i, I looked at it and I, what i can equate it to is i don't have kids so I'm, I'm maybe speaking a little bit out of out of turn here but you always want your kids to have it better and do better than you did right for sure so i kind of look at it like us as leaders in the 17th i mean jd you were the office superintendent you, you know you you want to grow these guys so you want to mentor them and grow them to make them as good as you were, if not better, knowing Definitely. that they're going to be the future leaders that are in turn going to do the same thing. So if you look at a lot of the, you know, the, the, the Rolos, the Matt Davises, the, the guys that were these, you know, senior airmen staff sergeants when we were there that ended up becoming, you know, senior leaders within the 17th and, you know, Matt runs the squatter now, those guys have all instilled that same thing. So yeah. when you say, yeah, they, they're better than we were, you're right. They are as they should be. As they because should be right. It should yeah, be right. an evolution. They, they right, should continue right. to evolve to get better. If if we ever end up in a situation where we're devolving, then then yeah, we some someone about a generation or two back is screwed up. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a good point. Hey, speaking of getting smoked, Brandy, do you feel? How do you feel about talking about um, what was that mission? The was it Red Wing? What they call that mission when you got went out there when you guys were attached to that uh, that Ranger platoon and you guys were like on that hike. What was that called? Red Wings. Red Wings, yeah. Rescuing Latrell. 
Yeah, yeah. I tell people I tell people that story all the time, and they can't imagine that they because they see that movie and then they talk, they hear you know all this stuff. And no, I'm not trying to take away anything from the actual guys who are on the ground, but it's amazing how your piece gets left out of, uh, like almost exclusively, like 100 percent of the time. Like nobody even talks about what you guys did and the great lengths it took to even get to that point. You know, I mean, it's just I don't know. Do you, do you want to elaborate on that at all? Kind of maybe from yeah, somebody who's I, there. I, yeah, I will. The, the, um, our team. You don't have to talk. I mean, you can just like yeah, tell your no, side. We're, no, we're so we internally, we talked about this a lot, especially after the book came out. And um, I've talked to uh, Rob O'Neill a few times. Uh, cause he, he was on, on that mission as well. Well, he started out on that mission. Um, but um, yeah, <laughs> there, mean? I mean, there's, there's a lot that that happened that was never in the book, and there was a lot that was in the book that never happened. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, you know, as far not to cut you off, but in, just in in his defense, he might not have known that the great detail about what you guys did. So that might have been well, why it's not well, not in we that. Had, book, you know? We did have one of his snipers and his medic that walked with us. Oh, okay, so, so not all of them got helicoptered off. So, um, so that they came um, to. Our talk, we was in, uh, out of um, Saad Bad. I'm sorry, J Bad at that time, and they they actually stopped by our talk because they were going up to do their mission, and they were told to get our Comsec fields because our our fields and their fields were different, and they in case they they needed it because they went there by themselves. So they went there, and um, uh, they their comms guy actually stopped. They're like, well, you know, the J Tech's got the you know does our Comsec, so. You know, I filled the radios for them uh, for the on the bird. I actually, took a picture of them that uh, I found later on on a freaking old drive one day. I'm like, holy crap! Wait, is this the original four that went out or the? Yeah, the, yeah, okay. yeah I, okay. I'll send it to you. But I've got a picture of them there, J Bad, before they got on the bird to go up there. Um, and I remember talking with them about some of the basics that we always, you know, do you, is your hub battery good? Um, right. Because I'm like, you know, if I feel this. I, before I even filled it, I'm like, is your hub battery good? Because if I fill it and you turn it off, you're going to lose your, your, your fill. And they're like, you know, oh, our radio guys take care of our radios for them. I'm like, all right. So I went ahead and filled them anyway. So they go up there. And uh, so we were packed up to leave. We, we were, our rotation was done. We were, we were within one day of leaving. So all of our stuff was in our ISU. I was, I was with uh, Team Two, RD Team Two at the time. No, I remember because I relieved, our team relieved your team right after you did that. And I was like, Oh, and we, I can't remember what we did, but it wasn't anything compared to what you guys did. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're, we're literally sat there and me and Dylan and uh, John Green and Harper, we're like throwing football and stuff and not knowing that, uh, you know, the helicopter just got shot down because they were looking for, for, for the team. And yeah. As as we heard helicopter got shot down. The the weather rolled in. And so, so we're sitting there uh, and so we walk in the top and we're like, Hey, what's going on? And I think McChrystal was, was there at the time and they couldn't, they didn't want to send another helicopter up there. So the, we got a call down from, from the big talk or from the jock and, and they're like, Hey, tell um, RD to unpack their shit. They're going to walk up the mountain. So we're like, all right. So we, we looked at you guys start. Did you get, did they drive it to a point and then we, you we started drove, walking or so we, we drove to Asadabad from Jalalabad and uh, we started walking from there and um, Graham Ferris He's got a cool map he made of showed the, the whole the whole route that we end up walking. Man. Um, so we start walking and we start out with uh, an ODA uh, assault team from um, SEAL Team Six. Uh, we had a platoon from two seven five and then uh, our team. Um, and then there was I'm sorry, I'm sorry two ODAs. One was a guard team that didn't make it 100 meters. Um, and then the the active duty ODA. So we we crested our first two, our first ridge was about two thousand feet uh, straight up. We got to the point in um, the ODAs, and we still had you know probably another 15, 20 miles straight line distance um, up and down. It was probably a little over forty miles. Um, but the SEAL Team Six and the ODA they they were done. They they called for helicopters, and they're like we're, really? we're done. Um, and so we got on, we, you know, did the Ranger thing that, uh, 
So we got on on the sat and we we're like, hey, we can still make it. Like we can, we can, we'll walk it. And they said the only way that they would let us walk it is if you JTAC maintain comms with the A10s the entire time. So I'm robbing batteries from the guys who are about to get helicoptered off. And so we're so everybody on my team had at least, you know, four extra batteries for me. And then then of course, you remember that was the HPW at the time. So we had, yeah. the, we had a little computer, I had the 117. We didn't have any body armor, so uh, all we had was our. God, our, just think if you did have body armor, man, you guys have been. Sp- yeah, so we had our we, we had our out there, and and then we yeah. had. Uh, it was a fox, not a golf, too, right? At that, it was a fox. Yeah, yeah, it was a fox. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so so we start yeah, walking. Yeah. Not the small the, one. And we had uh, Major Scott was actually w- was with us on a walk, and we had a, a sniper from from Blue and um, one of their medics. His name is his main name is Rip. Uh, he's a PA now. I, I still keep in touch with him. Um, so we just started walking. Har- Harper led led the uh, led the nav, and we walked uh, all the way there. And so it was nonstop. So we we ran out of ran out of water. We used all of our IVs for hydration. Every I time. remember that picture. I've seen that picture where like there's a bunch of dudes and when somebody's like holding an IV bag and that, so, so, kind of- not, so O'Neill's in that picture. So that that was the the top of the first hill. <laughs> oh no shit. Yeah, so so we're walking the ridge lines, and and JSOC kept trying to airdrop us freaking pallets. So we'd see it come out of the bird, and it float down. So we're on the ridge, and then it float down there. So we're like, yeah, you gotta be kidding me. So <laughs> I'm they, not going finally, down there again. they finally brought one on a helicopter, and, and we got water. But it was like nonstop walking, walking, walking. Um, well, yeah, if Harper was leading, like he's probably like, let's go, we're doing this, and yeah, you know, yeah, and he, you're not gonna yeah, say such a hard charger, man. Yeah. So we get to um, probably a ridge away, and according to the map that we had, we if they were probably tracking us the whole way. And so what, what I didn't know at the time, until I found out later when somebody else wrote a book, was um, they fast roped um, uh, Sergeant member Sergeant G from three seven five, but he was at two seven five. His first sergeant. Yep. Hand. Yep. So he was first starting there. So they fast rope with um, the dudes from from the seals that got helicoptered off. They fast roped in on, on the other side. So so they we were walking this way and they were walking this way. Um, so we we were got up to the ridge and again I had a tens the whole time for like three days straight. And <laughs> so we we saw the helicopter burning like it, it was burning nonstop. And mm-hmm. so. Harper thought, and so we're sitting there, we did kind of like a leader's huddle, and we're like, we walk, we walked the ridge the whole time, so if someone was there, that they saw us coming from, you know, a day off. Right. So so we kind of picked a spot to where we thought, if they were going to ambush us, this is probably where it's going to be, because there's going to be a lip we got to come up over to get to where the crash was. And as soon as we crest that, we're, we're kind of exposed. Yeah. So what I decided to do is I had a four-ship A-10s, and – I told them, it's like, hey, when we get to this point, I just want you to start running in over my shoulder. So they'd run in, pull off, run in, you know, two would pull off, three would pull off. In case just dry? Yeah, just dry. In case something okay. happened, I could immediately get them eyes on and they're already in the attack. Yeah, uh, good thinking. So so we, we started doing that. And then I think when they we, we crested and they opened up on us. And so – I think it was see. Accident. I didn't know any of this. I had no idea about any of this stuff. That's all. Go yeah, ahead. So, Keep going. Sorry. Yeah. It's, the book. I, I don't know. I heard the book said it was a lot. But anyway, I don't, I don't care about the book. I want to hear what you. Anyway, so they opened up on us, which we kind of expected. Right. Um, the I think it was number three of the four. Like immediately saw him, so I cleared him, and then he went guns and rockets, and was that was it. Like it was just literally yes. one one airstrike, and and it got him, and and. Those dudes had uh, a bunch of SEAL equipment and, and shit Oh, like really? That. Oh, yeah. Wow. But there was only like four or five dudes. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So we, we make it there about the same time Sergeant G makes it there. And, you know, we didn't have body bags. It, it was raining. It was, um, it, it was like, it was very non dramatic at that point. Yeah. Um, you, you know, well, you'd I, eliminated the threat and like there was, yeah, it was, it was, it was SSE like, at that we, point. We yeah, we were literally by the time we met up with with Sergeant G, by the time they made it to us, it was raining and cold, and we were at like I don't know eleven thousand feet or something. So we we were like building lean twos and and <laughs> like, 
like we literally eaten in the of course you know they get there all tactical and the seals start shooting at trees and or whatever um but uh yeah it was just so non-dramatic and then sorry yeah. g give you give you a hard time for it no not really i mean he was he was herding cats at that point i mean he was yeah. first time so he, he's um but uh while we're up there so about half a day we ran into some some wood choppers about a half a day before we, we made it there and we hired their um their goats or their yeah the goats to to um to haul our water and stuff so nice yeah and good it, idea it, i had a funny story about that so we're, we're like doing the you know stupid ranger thing and climbing straight up and trying to be tactical every, every time we crest the hill the goats in the the their herder would, would be there waiting on us and finally we got to the point where we're like just follow the goats you know yeah those guys can walk better than any of us anyway. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah just follow them. They're, they're, so we follow, We made it a lot, lot quicker. But that's when we got there in um, the – because, remember, they had their ICOM radios, and then they they called up the one of the, girl, the, the guys that had the goats saying, hey, the dock is is down bottom of the hill. And um, and I remember, Matt, when we were – when I was first um, – went with mag we had that free flight and we flew over that that area yep. so so matt and i got to fly over in an isr bird and i showed them nice. the area but there's really only two houses there there's not a village it's just two yeah. houses where he was and um so it, like we had a team walk down and like it was just it's so non is non what what the book was like it was it, it was harder to get there um than it was what what whatever he said in the book i never read the book never seen the movie um but from what i'm told it was you know covered with the enemy and all like, the movie was like at the end of it it was like a fiasco just like you know no. people running everywhere and fire sport assets doing their thing and helicopters and i yeah no. so so okay so you guys link up with g at the um and i know turn g from when i was at third bat like he was he was a um, matter of fact i think he was a co platoon sergeant i want to say he was he was yeah so i knew yeah he and i done a lot of stuff together he's a great dude and i saw him again uh not to get away from your story but i saw him again uh we were when i was at rd we were in doing like a winter surge or something and he was i felt so bad for him and his guys they were all walking up those hills in the middle of winter and of course we're driving into comas and stuff you know so we're like hey what's up he didn't like that um but no he's he's good good people so you guys met up with him at the crash site and then did you like police up all everybody and all this the guys yes, who they, did? They started recovering all the all the bodies. We we were so the um, there was some other stuff. So they they dropped some bombs um on who they thought did it. And so there was another mission that they wanted us to do was to go do BDA on another site. So oh, okay. Um uh, we had to get body bags and and all this other stuff brought in and and uh policed up. Um finding you know sensitive items and yeah all that crap and and it, it just it, you know you weren't totally sure that all the threat was gone but after the initial the initial airstrike all, all the threat was gone um, i mean you know how those guys are once that happens they're not they don't they're not very brave anymore they turn they turn from fighter into goat herder and her you know whatever yeah. shepherd so <laughs> we were only there with them um maybe about 24 hours and then they had us uh walk to uh bda site so we we walked even some more we took um actually i think we took uh two platoons with us because um captain works which i think he's a general now is um he played uh he was a linebacker at, at uh, the academy but uh we we walked with with them and again harper led the led the walk so it was you know non-stop <laughs> horrendous just um Put your head down and keep up. Yeah, yeah. So, and then do you so, ever meet Harper Wilmoth, Matt? Do you ever know him, Harper? Yeah, I met him. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. He, actually, he actually retires this year. Oh, uh, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been up there fifteen years now. He do thirty up or how, he will. When did he leave regiment? Um, in nine, when he left, two thousand nine. He's been up there all that time, man. Yeah, yeah. Is he sergeant major up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all yeah are. Of course, yeah. Of course. yeah. <laughs> so, did you ever make it to where Latrell was? Uh, so we walked down the, the the ODA is one that actually linked up with them, and then they had uh, some. We walked down the bottom of the hill with them, um, okay. but they like 
it was like Matt seen it. It was it was a house. Yeah. It was it was so non dramatic. Like the it, it was just for them to write a book about it. Like it was just it was just weird for us that, that it was such a big deal in a movie, and we're like. Like that was non. Like that was such a non. But you know, you know what though? You know how Hollywood is, man. They get it. They yeah. don't like even Black Hawk Down. That you know, when I had the opportunity to speak to in, I was in the vicinity of Eversman, you know, and he, I heard him say something about like, yeah, that was. Oh, and there was who was that? Uh, I hate it that I can't remember this guy's name right now, but he was that fire sport guy from Seco. Man, you remember who I'm talking about? Anyway, the even the guys that were there were like, yeah, it was just a kind of a conglomeration of. Everything oh, about Jeff. Uh, yes. Him? Yeah. 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 McLaughlin. <sighs> McLaughlin. Yeah. Great dude. Awesome guy. Um, he said he was he was one of the guys carrying the litters. You know, yeah. and that he wasn't even they just they just kind of like mash everybody together, and make it a, a nice tight package for a movie, you know, or whatever. So I could see how maybe like they took Latrell's account and they're like, well, this we can't make it like this. Nobody's gonna come watch this movie if we just you know if it's lame at the end. So I they probably they passed through some other stuff in. So I watched him walk past me and it was, you know, we were still, we, we hadn't found all his team at, at that time. Um, and I mean, there's some details that I'll, I'll tell you, not over this forum, but I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> what, what really happened as far okay. as how we found some of his team. I, I, I may have told Matt, but the, um, I, I, it's hard to talk about this particular mission because there's their side of the story. Yeah already out there and published and in their their prs and that's exactly why i wanted this to happen because like i know i mean i had to hear about it when when i got to country i'm like oh yeah we're i'm because we're like we hadn't heard about any of this stuff when we first got there and then we're like you know ripping out with you and um i didn't even understand the gravity of it when you told me about it before you guys left i was like Eh, all right. So you walked a little bit. Big deal, wuss. You know, whatever. So you know, I didn't understand. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even. I didn't understand what had happened. You know, so yeah. And then later on, well, I'm like, that's what happened. That's what was going on. Oh my god. Yeah. It's such was, a, it's such we a just crazy the same way. Thing. They're like, they're like, oh, like helicopter crash. I'm like, all right. So we start walking before, like, the, all the intel was trickling in as we're walking. I'm like, so I'm like getting some of this from the A10s and some from Sat, some from some from uh, um, HPW. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, there's. Like there may be more up there for us when we get there. So we're thinking we're just going to, you know, it wasn't just a crash. It was like, Oh, they they got shot down and Oh, there's another, they they were reacting to someone else. And yeah. 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 So it it got to be, you know, so we started taking like, all right, the closer we get, like we, we really, we we got to get a little serious here because it was like literally walking with your, you know, weapon on like, this is sucks, you know, head down. Cause I remember at the time I had the only dual tube knob, dual, dual tube nods, uh, that's when yeah. the Rangers still had the 14. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, I was like walking right behind, um, Harper because I could see better. And <laughs> right. it, it was, it was just, it was just a cluster the whole time. But looking back on it, it was, it was, it, it was a tough mission, but it was, it was nothing like it was portrayed in the book at all. And that's kind of my, the way I look at it is that there was nobody else. The fact that you said that some guys dropped out, some guys did some other stuff. The the nature of the way the guys we supported train, I could it, it's like a no brainer. Like yes, of course that's what they did. Of course that's is you know they just kept going and they gave each other ideas on the way. And because what people fail to realize is that's just the way they are all the time. Like there right. you do like a savage strike or you do some sort of injury somewhere and you know you're just walking for days, like literally days. You know with a, with no sleep and like no food and whatever. So. Yeah, if anybody was going to do it, you guys were the ones to do it for sure. Yeah, yeah, it, was, was, yeah it was like I said, it was it, it was one of those any platoon would have done it, any team, any RT team, team would yeah. have done it. It just it was the right the the regiment was the right group of dudes to to do that yeah. mission because just because of their mentality. Yeah. But speaking of speaking of like the, the different mentalities, what I have re- and I Matt, I want to get your take on this. The one thing that I've noticed about the difference between SF and Ranger is like when I every mission I ever went on with the Rangers, it was almost like we were cheating. I had five assets in the air. I had, um, you know, I had a bunch of dudes behind me. I had I had all the all the everything I needed to be successful, the element of surprise, the assets to get there and everything. 
But then when I talked, we would share a safe house with SF guys sometimes. And it was like, they were almost out there flapping. So, and so Matt, maybe you can talk to that a little bit about the difference. Cause you've done both, you know, and where Brandy and I have not, um, you Matt talk about how when you're out with an SF team, artillery in Afghanistan, weren't you? What's that? Yeah, actually, yeah, just outside of Asadabad. So, like, yeah, maybe you can like talk to your experience as an SF guy, and maybe some some scrapes you got into because those guys, you guys, really were vulnerable, and you, but by design, like you were like, well, we're just going to cruise down. I didn't remember, and this may not be across the board, but I remember safe, like when I said, I shared that safe house with those guys and like, yeah, we're just going to cruise up this, uh, this main Avenue right here. It, it's got a lot of bad guys on it. We're going to see what happens. I'm like, that's bananas to me. I can't, I'm like, what do you have any assets? Nah, we got this mini gun on hot, you know, on this, you know, truck. So that'll be fine. And I'm like, all right, let's, let's do it. You have yeah. Can you I mean, speak to that, Matt? Yeah. Most of my SF time was, I mean, I, was my first one was in 02, early 02 to September, and then um, and then 05, 06, and then uh, 05, 06, and then 07. But yes, but team real real team time was 02, and then 05, 06, 05 and 06. I mean the biggest the biggest differences, yeah, a lot of it has to do with there, there's there's two things, just, and I'll, I'll talk to you from a JTAC perspective. When you're with the task force, you're exposed to a lot more assets. You're training with those assets. You know what capabilities they bring to the fight. You know, and I'm not just I'm talking just basic ISR stuff. You right. know, who's got armed assets, who has non-armed assets, who's, you know, what national assets are available to task. You know, and, and it really broke it down where it was really an education level. When you're with an SF team, and in you know, my first time over, I came from Hawaii, I was just augmenting those guys. And I'd never worked with a lot of the I'd never worked with any kind of, you know, unmanned asset. Um, you know, I've done a lot of conventional stuff, but yeah, we would go out on patrol. We hardly ever, unless we absolutely knew. Wait, hold on real quick. Fight. Right before you get too far, you came from Hawaii. Don't, don't yeah. like, don't diminish that. But who'd you have in Hawaii? Cause I, the 25th has always, uh, historically had like really good dudes there. So like who, who was there when you were there at that? Uh, time? I think the, I want to say the, who was the super, the super 10, I think it was Hello, wasn't it? Mark Hall was there at the time. So. Yeah, so Mark Ball yep. came from 275. Eric Kibbe was there. He came from 275. Another so, yeah, guy. Hawaii's always had a lot of solid solid guys that have come yeah. out. Brett Ramos came out of there. Um, you know, a, a ton of dudes. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we had we had good leadership. And and you, Matt Nugent, that's where Matt came out of. Right, so, right. Uh, yeah, so like I said, a lot of, a lot of guys that, in, you know, had stellar careers prior to going over there and then uh, really, you know, rock star careers after the fact. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I got, I got over there and I – OT, I didn't really know. We were, I was in such a benign area. I was up in Bombian. It was like I was. I should have been a photographer for National Geographic. Because <laughs> all we did was drive around and basically do, you know, debt UXOs. Uh, me yeah. and Charlie would just blow up bombs that had been left everywhere, clear stuff out, um, go do, you know, meet and greets with the villagers. So, so our, you know, our pres- a lot of presence patrols. That's really all we did there. Right? We made contact one time, and it was, uh, I mean, it was a big nothing burger, you know. So yeah. that's, I mean, it's a funny story because it was the first time we were up in Poli Comri, uh, which turned out to end up being up in the Bogon province, which turned out to be a really bad area uh, for pretty much the duration of the war. But when we were up there, we, we cruised in and there was an ice cream stand that was selling ice cream. <laughs> and I mean, we've been eating teas and E's for the past like four months. So I'm like, oh, my God, ice cream. You know, all our food got dropped into us because bombing was still an extremely remote area. Um, yeah. So I was just about to get my ice cream when some jackass you know pulled up and started shooting at us so i didn't get my ice cream we reacted to that and like i said nothing nothing really happened but yeah. uh but yeah yeah and we'd get rocketed every now and then but yeah like i said so back to your back to what you're asking it was exposure to it but yeah we just didn't have the assets man the assets were all tied up with the task force so isr wasn't going to happen the only time you could even get most of the time that you could get fighters is if you were in a tick and you know troops in contact, right? And, and then, then they got to the point where they would be like, "Well, state the nature of your tick." Jesus, <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? <laughs> well, I mean you, you know, how better are you getting shot at? Are you being rocketed? Are you being, you know, is it direct fire? How you know? So it, you would have to get to where you would almost have to. I don't want to say lie, but no, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to embellish as, to be like, "Hey, dude, I, you know, I need some assets here, man." And when I was uh, down at uh, Lawara. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, we were in a very hot area. We were getting attacked. We got overran twice there. So we were getting attacked off. So the A-10s, would, they would just come trolling down there anyway. Um, so they would, you know, so we got a lot more assets. But I remember the first time a MQ-1 showed up, 
I didn't, I didn't know what the hell to do with it, man. I was like, who are you? What are you? You know, he's like, Hey, we're, yeah. you know, we're, we're not secure. And I'm like, Whoa, but I'm going to talk to the tens on, you know? So, so there was a lot of, it was a huge learning curve where yeah. with the Rangers, you're training with those guys, you know, the capability, be it rotor wing, fixed wing. Like I said, you know, all the potential they bring, be it, you know, their signals, capabilities, their weaponry. I mean, just, there's just, it's just such a, a steeper learning curve and you have exposure to it. So, that, I mean, that was the biggest thing. Like you said, yeah, we would just roll. Cause we're like, Oh, we got, God, I got 50 cal, you know, exactly. I got, a, I got a two or three and I'm, I'm sitting in the back of a Humvee on a two. You know, I was, I was going to go mention that some of the coolest pictures I've, I've ever saw was because one thing I would love about Matt, he's, he's always a kind of a tech guy like, like me. And uh, he would send me pictures where they go on patrol and he was sitting in the back, man, in the 240. But he was he was one of the first ones in theater flying in, flying the UAVs. He, it was oh, great, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah our, I mean, our deployment in 2005, I was at the 720th. It was me and Andy Martins, which I'm sure you guys know Andy. probably know Andy. He got a Silver Star during uh, – um, during – uh, gothic not gothic uh anaconda okay. so he's one of the two four guys up up there dealing with that but uh but yeah me and him we were doing all this you know the battlefield air operation stuff testing all the kit running with our cf-18s and i had gotten trained as a uh, uh raven uh uav operator so i didn't take one with me but one of the team had one didn't even know they had it so i opened up a pelican case one day i'm like oh man you guys got a raven and they're like, yeah, cool. What's that? I was like, dude, it's a, you know, we can do our own ISR now. Like, we can actually do route reconnaissance. Or when we get rocketed, I can fly this thing up and we can look at the hilltops. So, so yeah, I, I just started using it. And I set up like a little command station in the back of the back of the NTV in the back of the Hilux, and uh, had my CF-18, and I'd launch the Raven ahead of us, and we would go on patrol, and I'd be watching it, talking to if I had other assets, talking with them. And, yeah. so, dude, that was, was back cool. when it was like it was brand new. What was cool about that whole thing is we got to validate a lot of stuff in combat. Hey, does this work? Does it not work? And, and you yeah, kind of learned. You're, you're the one that exposed me to uh, when Piss Off first came out. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. You were a man on Piss Off. You could do, like, I, I, I still, to this day, it could, I couldn't even tell you anything about it. But I remember you always used to have, like, the you always you knew how to do it. You always had the menstruated court, and you could always do everything. It was so, man, yeah, it was, like, pretty impressive. Really, well, like I was a, you know, five when I, I ended up uh, Winchester and at B1. I mean, I gave those guys the coordinates were piss off coordinates. I gave them cat one coordinates right off of what <laughs> I you know, mensurated and shot them to the bird, told them they were cat one, and then he built a box off of them. And so, yeah, so it, that was probably the nice thing. And that was just, I was fortunate there because I was exposed to the 720th and the new technology yeah. that they were doing. Yeah. But your typical, your typical TAC P at an SF guy, or lo and behold, like I was my first time, an augment T from a convention unit. Right. Dude, you know, I mean, you can't even spell soft half the time. And <laughs> right. you know, we were sending, and we did that a lot, sending guys down. And really, really, I, in my mind, they were solid guys in most, for most, for the most part. Yeah. But you kind of put those guys in, you know, you kind of expose them and you really expose that team to those guys thinking, oh, I've got a JTAC. And those dudes look at it just like the regiment used to. Oh, dude, JTAC's a JTAC's a JTAC. No, 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 yeah. no, not necessarily. There are, there are differences. That's, yep. They've gotten past that. Everybody's trained to a lot better standard now. But, dude, sure. I mean, 2002, you know, you, you, there were complete differences in training standards. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I think a, a huge – I think for our career field in general, especially the soft side, I, I, I think you don't understand how much you contribute to um, the soft TACP as a whole just being in the position because you were able to uh, have us come down and, and be exposed to some of this technology that uh, – the, the our our brethren would 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 not, they weren't really hoarding it but they were just you know all this great knowledge that that was being in one place and it wasn't until you know you were in that program manager position uh, with pimp and until we started getting exposed to, to the UAVs to the to piss off to to you know all this cool shit. like um, I think you were the first show me the um, when we had the laser rangefinder attached to uh, could do the coordinates. I'm like, oh, with the, yeah, with the dongle wireless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. To blue, or to uh, bareback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you, you, I think that uh, that play influenced the soft tack B as a whole. I think that oh, 100. Uh, and that's yeah. kind of what I was alluding to before. Like it, the other guys that were there were were awesome, but I I just I have a really vivid memory in my mind of match like 
being the focal point of the soft, like even the soft community. Cause even like, like Brandon, you like you were talking about, we, we were working, we worked with the Rangers, but like you said, we weren't exposed to everything they had. We were, we were trying to figure out how to get our own stuff. And then we'd, ACC would be like, well, here the we if you remember, we yeah. borrowed their, their uh, inventors. That's right. That's right. <laughs> ACC would be like, here, this is the kit you get. And I'm like, well, this doesn't have any, I can't use this over here. Like, this is not compatible with my Ranger mission. But then, like, when, like I said, Matt, like you, you were there, to, you, man, you were so integral in like giving us all that kind of insight where we could be like, no, we could go back to our, whoever was giving us our equipment and be like, no, this is what they're using at the 720th. This is what we need. Our guys are using this. You know, let's, we need to go down these paths or whatever. So, well, yeah. And, I mean, and I was fortunate there too, because I got exposed to a lot of what the 2-4 was using because I was going out with those yeah, guys, exactly. training with those guys a lot. I was working, you know, hand in hand with Nate Holton and Eddie and those guys. So I would see a lot of, you know, even, even though we were testing and, you know, exploring new equipment with Alan Yoshida and, you know, like Phil's, or I mean, like a, uh, Randy said, Phil, um, but yeah, there was, there, they even had, dude, they had stuff that was levels above us, Yeah, you know, that, and, and I think that's probably one of the, probably the biggest thing that was always frustrating was just that lack of communication that there were so many different capabilities that really guys had access to, but like bareback and all that stuff, that was all free, man. This stuff was yeah, free. Exactly. Like, it, it wasn't like you had to buy it. A lot of this stuff was just getting it, you know, Hey, getting it and getting trained on it. And, and we always did well, a, first knowing about it. And well, then, it, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. And we always did a horrible job in our community of trying to, I want to say helping each other out and educating each other. Everybody yeah. kind of felt like, Oh, I've got a secret and I'm not going to share it. It's like, yeah, I mean, that doesn't do anybody else any good. Um, and it, it was either, it was either by design or just accidentally, you know, they would just, there yeah. was just either way. I, they're both, I both occurred. The yeah. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it was intentional, but, uh, but yeah, but it just got, went down that path and you're like, Oh yeah. man, this sucks. So that was, I, I always did want to, I think some of our old, I think some of our old chiefs, when we were coming up at the time, it was intentional. That they, they, I, I do, I do too. They would sure. not purposely would not buy us the, the, the equipment we needed because they just well, don't want. Brandy, I think you were just getting ready to leave or it just left. But I, when did you retire? Was it 07? 09. Oh, oh, you retired in 09. Shit. So you were still there then. Yeah. Um, but I remember, I remember borrowing body armor from the 15th ASOS. And going and borrowing and going to 720th and asking those guys because we didn't have plates for our guys, man. Yep. This is dudes we're sending down yeah, all the time. It was like that. Rangers, right. and we didn't even we didn't have body armor for these. Like that was, you know, stuff like that just used to drive me crazy. Yeah, me too. Not, not to mention have, our radios and everything else. I mean, it's like, dude, body armor, you know? Yeah. Well, it used to frustrate me because we're like, uh, as a community, we'd try to, we'd be say like, um, well, what should we be getting? What, what what are our requirements? What kind of equipment should be? I'm like, why don't we just ask the tip of the spear? The 24th STS is right there. Why don't we just ask them what they're using and then buy that stuff? And then I was like, oh, well, they, they're they a different kind of entity and they do different missions. I'm like, no, it's all the same, dude. We, if well, Why would we try to invest time and money in this piece of kit that I'm not going to use anyway? I, I, I was on target with, with, with La Monica from the 2-4. Like, I was on target with the 2-4 guys like you were exactly. too. I'm like... Like just to buy what they buy. Just give us that yeah, stuff, like, you know? You, know you learn lessons for people all the time when you're in the military and even when you get out, you know, and, and I've had some some moments in my life where I can look back and go like, man, that was a that was a great comment. And I was at a TACP conference in uh, Fort, at Fort Lewis, Washington. Um, I forgot, I think the 5th ASOS was hosting or something. It was, you remember how the worldwide conferences and all the, the squatter superintendents would go to it and they would yep. talk about, you know, I don't know where the career field's going. And they were talking about technology. And I remember I stood up and I was like, hey, look, I was from, I think I was from the 720th at that time, or just gotten to the 17th. And I was like, hey, this is what they're doing. This is what they're doing. This is what they're doing. And um, at the end of it, you know, I, I got a bunch of, you know, guys were like, yeah, you know, that's where we should be going. And of course, all the chiefs up there were like, you know, okay, yeah, I've got it. Just like, once again, you know, yeah, running, yeah, running yeah, out, yeah, speaking out of turn. And Travis Woodworth, Whiskey Whiskey, came over to me afterwards. He goes, Hey man, I'm just going to give you a little advice because as soon as you said, this is what special tactics has, you shut down half that audience. Yep. He's like, so. Which I'm makes no sense. That. Yeah. He goes, next time leave ST, leave AFSOC out of it. For, you know, give them the spiel on what you think guys need because you've worked with it. But he goes, I'm telling you, Matt, I looked around the audience and you lost half those guys as soon as. ST and AFSOC. A bunch of eyes rolling back in their head. And exactly. It made a lot of sense. And after that, I was like, 
yeah, that, you're right. There's, I, I forget that people are still, you know, have that division and, you know, so can't weird. If, if, you, if you remember, this, this was, the thing was down at Fort Hood. Um, <laughs> it's when we was trying to replace the, the digital stuff. You oh, know, and Jazz chewed my ass? Well, <laughs> what happened with that? You were told that they, Jazz told him, he was like, don't, don't, don't bring it up and don't demo it. Cause it what, was, what part, what was it? It was, um, we were, had the OQO computers and we were yeah. doing, yeah, we were running yeah. bareback on them and, and everything was wireless. Was from the, we had everything. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and Jazz is like, don't, don't even, don't even demo that. He's like, we're trying to get this approved. And we're like, this is works better. You know, there there's a certain there's certain yeah, individuals under a lot of pressure to like well, you know. The best part is that it was me and Ed Shulman. So so we go down there and oh God. and we're standing right next to the guys that are trying to demo. I think it was uh, uh who does the tactic? Who was it that uh, did all that? Um, oh the retired man. fifth group tactic. Roman. Yeah, Roman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie Heidel. Charlie Heidel. Yeah. Oh, Charlie's right, over right. there with all the Chiefs trying to demonstrate how great this works. And Ed's sitting there, and, and Ed just like everything syncs up. He's like, boop. He goes, I got the because I got an eye line over here already. Here you guys are ready to see it. Yeah, so everybody ready. migrated from over there to see what me and Ed were doing. And, uh, and I was like, oh, this ain't going to go well. So, so yeah, I stood but that at the end kid. of the day. I, I was at parade rest for about 15 minutes while Jazz <laughs> just, just ripped me up when he was ACC chief. <laughs> but that old kit sucked, man. Like that old yeah. uh, Tech P cast system was just like. Uh, just a boat anchor, dude. They never just putting their kit in there. I never did get it work. The funny part is they never got it working that, that never those two days. Uh, yeah. And and the BAA stuff worked great the whole time. <laughs> yeah. The problem with that, and this is I don't want to get too creepy and too you know lame, but they they find out a requirement, then they start figuring out how they're gonna do it, and then a decade later they may have a product, and by that time that's all obsolete, and then we, nobody can use yeah. the thing. And it's, yeah, I mean, look, we just approved the iPhone four. We're like <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Where I'm on the 14. Thanks, bud. And they, and not only that, not only is it obsolete, but they expect you to use it too. They're like, "Well, this is the kit yeah. you get, and this is what well, we're going to yeah, use." Yeah, we, we put all this money into it. You have to use it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like that's great, man. I think it. I don't know if it's changed now, but it seems like it has. Like it seems like the. I don't know if the system has changed or whatever, but it seems it's a it's a little better now than it was. Uh, but I mean, I Brandy's know. way smarter on it than I am, but uh, with ATAC and. Yeah, stuff yeah. That those guys are doing, man. Yeah, it's yep. it's. I mean, links years. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's well. Yeah, that there it it has come a long way. I mean, those guys are really doing a good deal, man. That's... They finally came up with one system that's open architecture that they yep. can build all these plugins for. So it, it's really it's right. But the the irony is is there are still competing systems out there that keep trying to that, that still keep trying to poke holes and and you know what's been working for the past eight nine years now. Because so. somebody somewhere is buddies with it and wants to get a job when he gets out, or yeah. is a contractor from for some company and wants trying to push his agenda. Yeah, I mean it all boils down to money. Yeah. For sure, hundred percent. I, I want to circle back on, on one thing, and it's probably because um, I've given you both evals. Um, <laughs> no, we so we talked about uh, standards, and so if, if we want to bring it back full circle, if we talked about how it was when we first got there and why our operators were so much better the the biggest feedback and it still goes on to this day talking to the, to the guys in 17th now um, is the, and it is a common theme uh, you guys heard when you were there is the hardest eval you got was when you got the 17th. Yeah. And then, and it's because, you know, because before that n nobody wanted to downgrade, you know, everybody wanted their package so perfect so they can go to the 17th. Uh, and then when they got 17th, you get freaking humbled walking through the door uh, on the first, you know, uh, cast trip you go on. And it's, it's, um, uh, I think a lot of that goes back to um, one of the last things that I did as a superintendent as um, we had a big inspection uh, when, when Matt and I were there and one of them was the standabout, the ninth Air Force standabout inspection. We got kudos. We got um, best practice because we had, downgrades we had retraining <laughs> we had uh guys failing evals we had you know because in the rest of the, the jtac world even to this day it's it's it, it, unless you're in the uh, uh, elite unit um 
all the other ones that once they get to the elite unit, they're afraid to fail. They're, they're afraid yeah. to get downgraded. They're they don't want to look bad. Then they, look, they get that stink on them, and they're like, oh, I, you know, instead of instead of like acknowledging that you maybe you're not where you need to be, and taking that that uh, that failure, you know, everybody wants to be wants to kind of cover it up. It's like, well, that's that's not very safe, man. It's like you have to do that stuff real world, and you're not you're not up to where you need to be. That's a dangerous thing to do is send a guy untrained to the to the world, well, you know. And, this, and the sad part about it is you can there's you know a few accidents out there that you can look straight at and, yeah. and, and see that whole chain of events where guys were downgraded but then were you know bumped up to deploy or guys were you know should have never should have never been qualified to begin with. Yeah. Have, yeah, yeah. So so Pete Pete Muley, while I was there, uh, failed failed a uh, check ride, and um, so he had to get. He had Not to calling get, anybody out, but. No, 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 no. The reason I say this because um, he called afterwards. So he was, he came to my office afterwards and he's like, you know, he was kind of looking for a shoulder to cry on, but I had to be realistic. I said, Pete, if, if you can't pass a check right here, I can't, I can't use you here. Right. Um, and it's for your own good. I said, exactly. You know, exactly. I, I said, I said you, you're going to endanger not only yourself, but everybody around you. So you're one deep as a JTAC on that with those Rangers. And when it hits the fan, everybody looks to you like, all right, make, make magic happen because, right. you know, because that's what they expect. Yeah. And, um, and make it happen safely where you don't kill, where you don't kill everybody, you know? Right. So he got his reavow and, and he passed. And then, you know, sure enough, his ne next rotation, he got into a massive freaking firefight. And oh, he called me from, from overseas. He's like, Hey, I get it. <laughs> I to Dude, I totally get it. I understand now what the hell. I did, I'd never heard the story. That's awesome. I've never heard that before. Yeah. It was I mean, it's real. And that's what I think to your point, like people kind of like looked at it as a bad thing. Like, well, these, those 17th evaluators are too hard or this or that. I'm like, it's not, it's not that we're hard or we were hard. It's that we are thorough and we make sure yeah. and we put you in a position where you're, it's going to mirror what you're going to see overseas. I'm not, like, I'm not going to give you some crappy scenario. So you're not ready to go when you get over there. Like this is, yeah. you're going to have multiple assets. You're going to have, it's going to be dark. You know, you're going to be on the move. You know, it's, it's going to be a situation that you're going to experience when you're there. That way, the first time you do it is not in combat. You know, you're, you're like, Oh, I've seen this before. Yeah. Brandy gave me this, like this, this almost identical evaluation and they execute and they save everybody's life. You yeah. know, so it's, and if, you know, you get some of the, the guys that are kind of older, they're still in now, they're going to watch this and they're going to be like, yep, fuck all three of those guys. Because <laughs> they were the, I hear across the board, because I always kind of joke, I'm like, who was, who was your hardest evaluators? And they, they, they always name us three. They're like, I wouldn't want to be eval from all of them. But um, I, you know what? I, to be honest, I never gave a lot of, I never failed a lot of guys. I don't, I can't remember anybody I actually failed. I don't I think put, our evaluations were hard. They were just thorough. Right, exactly. And, and, you, and you, know, you should know how to do it. Right. They were realistic. I mean, you, you yeah, put right. real world scenarios into them. A lot of guys, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to put you on an OP. So, uh, my very last eval I gave was, was to Matt, and we were out in New Mexico, and I, joking around, I threw everything I could think at him. Like, I was <laughs> making up shit, and I couldn't, he was just, I don't know if he was like read my mind. Like, he was always one step ahead of me. I could not. Walter, like that dude was all over it. I'm like, fuck, yeah, I just as an evaluator, I just gave up. I'm like, all right, fuck. Like, I, can't, I, can't anything. I thought I had him on one thing that I thought he was dropping too close, and he flipped open his, his little computer and he showed me the <laughs> men, moving men safe. He had us, and then he had his men safe around us. He's like, no, nope, nice. the falls outside. I'm like, god damn it, yeah, while he was flying a UAV, like it was crazy. Not to get all over you, Jock Matt, but I've often told I've told people many times you're. If not the best, one of the best JTACs I've ever seen. Like just and not I don't mean that in like a I mean I mean that in every sense of the word. Like you, it's the technology part, the improvisation part, the the uh regulation, all everything about it <clears throat> used to nail it. I mean it was just like I don't know. I I was always so yeah, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen a lot of JTACs then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, man, you used to crush, you, you used to crush it, man. I'm telling you. I yeah, I was gonna I was gonna add one more thing to what kind of what Brandy was saying, and then we'll we'll kill this horse. But, um, <laughs> you know, well, I was over when I was overseas in 2010. I was the uh, SCA for the 23 SDS over there. Um, so I was, you know, it was me and uh, Colonel Nelson, and then and he and I got re got replaced by Colonel Benson on rotation, and we were backfilling um, Carlos Neris and 
Chris Larkin, who had to go back for a while. So I ended up doing 90 days over there on a, on a rotation. And um, we ended up, it was, it's a real quick story, but we ended up getting, they got, they filled a requirement that Dev had put in three years prior for JTAX out with the uh, Omegas, right? So we can, you know, I'll talk about the Omega team because they're, you know, whatever. It's that whole thing's gone now. But yeah. So, so these two guys from, so who fills it? Packass fills it, right? So they put it out to Packass. So two guys from Alaska show up and uh, <laughs> I'm like, who are you guys? Cause they show up at, at the stock yeah. and, and they showed up at the jock and they couldn't get in. So they showed up at the stock and I'm like, who, who are you guys? So they explained it to me. One of them ended up becoming a seven teeth guy, uh, Chachi Sharania. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. The other guy, I'm, I'm not going to mention his name. They show up and I'm like, hold on, man. Who, who, who are you guys here to support? You're going where? And I'm like, and you're from what? So anyway, I go over and I talk to the I talk to the regiment. I go to the jock and uh, I talk to Colonel. I think it was Colonel Chen was RCO or not the RCO, but anyway, he was running the jock at the time. And I'm like, hey, sir, like, it might have been three. I'm like, sir, you, you got these two guys? He's like, yeah, man, we're getting ready to push them out. You know, let me know when they're ready. I was like, so these guys aren't not these aren't what you these are not the right guys. Like they're you know, I'll talk to them, what they're going to be doing out there, who they're going to be working with. The assets are going to be controlling, blah, 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 blah. I was like, I don't think this is a, a smart movie. He goes, yeah, you know what? Well, we're not going to send them out to those guys anyway, but I want to send them out to platoon. We're short guys at X, Y, and Z. And now, now I'm really like, at least in an Omega team, they can, you know, they're, they're not out doing Can I change my answer? Yeah. Totally not. So anyway, so I go back. And, and the one guy is very – he ran the stand program at his unit, a good JTAC tech sergeant, you know, very smart, very book smart. And I'm like, hey man, have you ever worked with this? Have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he's like, he's like, look, Sergeant, I'm a I'm a tech sergeant JTAC. I run Standabell where I'm at. There's nothing that can be like I, I get it. <laughs> I'm good. I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, it's it's a different world, man. At least let me work with you a little bit before I feed you the Yeah, I'm not world. trying to short you. I'm trying to keep yeah, you alive. Just I mean, this is not this ain't what you're used to. Nope. So anyway, so finally. Girl Chen's like, is there a is there a safety reason why he's a qualified JTAC, right? Yes, sir. Well, then send him out. Oh, got it. And not, by the way, I'm not even over there supporting the task force. I'm over there supporting an SDS at the time. Right. So uh, so I boom. So I push him out, right? Tommy took uh, Sharania down to uh three zero and I pushed this other guy out to ah oh, god, where did he go? I don't know, somewhere down by Kandahar. But it was a pretty hot area. Yeah. First time on target, man. Guy just blow bolos it. He falls out, falls out of the wall. They didn't offset, falls out of the wall, you know, the walk into the target, gets there, can't control the assets, uh, ends up like almost, you know, the FOs had to jump in, uh, you know, the old FSO guys, FSE guys had to jump in to help him out. And it's like, oh my God, man. So anyway, so he comes back. I get a call and they're like, hey, we don't want this guy. Get in the hell off our fire base. No shit. First mission, first and only mission. <laughs> That's so, what I'm to back. Say. So, so I go back. I was like, "Hey, sir, this is what I was trying to tell you." Like these are, these are <laughs> but that guy came back, right? So he comes back, and I don't know what the hell to do with it. I I, I can't use him where I'm at, but I still yeah. got to use him. So I'm like, well, I don't know. It's so like Steve Stalker. I'm like, "Hey, Steve, can you use this guy for something?" Like he he got kicked out of the. Steve's like, "Oh, I don't got clicked out of the platoon." It's everybody's talking about it. You know, fire sports side. <laughs> like, All right. So Steve takes Oh, I'm sure that just ran like wildfire throughout yeah. the, oh my God. the, the battalion. Steve offer. takes this guy. He's an E6, and he links him up with a kid that had tried to commit suicide over there to take a bunch man. of pills, and they're picking up trash around Camp Alpha. Oh, man. So that's what this guy's doing. So finally, he comes over to me, and he's he's pretty upset and pretty disheveled. And he goes, so I'm just like, you got to help me. I, I, I can't do this. Like, I can't spend three months picking up trash <laughs> working for Sergeant Stalker. So I was like, <laughs> all right. So I ended up, I ended up, you know, and this is where we'll come back. You know, it comes full circle to the Raiders versus the SF side, right? So I went over and I talked to the uh, the guys at the at the jock on the SF side of Camp Vance. I said, "Hey, man, I got this dude, really, really smart guy. Probably be a great guy for planning, you know, executing, coordinating assets, this, that, and the other." I was like, "Can you guys use him?" Hell yeah, they took him. He went over there, dude, and crushed it. Nice, did a great job. I mean, you know, because I mean, he. Really, really maybe good. Slow, maybe a slower pace, maybe a little easier. Yeah. Slower pace, yeah. He could use his, you know, his his knowledge as opposed to having to run and gun. And dude, it, it worked out funny, but but it all came back to it, the guys aren't plug and play, you know. Yeah, and, for and, sure. And while we're stroking the seventeenth here, there is a level of standard, whether it's the seventeenth, whether it's two four, whether it's any SMU 
guys perform to a higher standard, man. And, you know, and even the STSs, start- even like the white side FC STSs, yeah, you get, exactly. you get in there and you start, you know, getting peered by everybody. You're like, oh, I better be in shape or I better know what I'm doing because not only are you uh, at a higher level, but you're a tech P at an STS. So, like, if you suck, that's like double a double whammy for you, you know. Oh, but yeah. So, you know, but not, but we've also had guys that have gone there and crushed. They they put them in yeah. charge of teams. They do, you know. So yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, it, and going yeah, back I mean, to what I said about the conventional, I mean, this, I don't know if you know this, JD, but the seven twentieth special tax group chief is a tech P. Yeah, Serpa, right? And, yeah, and Evan Serpa going over there. That's awesome. That is, I mean, that's that's how you know. I mean, Serpa's a great dude anyway. But that's how you know, like our career field is getting to the point where people are starting to. Or not a career field, but like the the seventeenth is getting to a point where people are starting to recognize. Yeah, these guys know what they're doing, and again, not everybody. I mean, you couldn't put any cheap. I mean, maybe not everybody might fit over there. I mean, Serpa's a great dude, so um, but he came from somewhere, right? So he, you know, he got up through that through the seventeenth, and yeah, that's awesome. I that's that's I heard about that. That's pretty good news, but uh, yeah, um, Brandon, do you want to talk? I don't know how you feel about it. Do you. Do you feel comfortable talking about the dam at all, or do you want to um, maybe a broad, broad, broad strokes, or what do you think? Is it com- uh, are you comfortable talking about it? Yeah, it's been a how long how long you want to go on, on this? Uh, it, well, yeah, I mean, if you got, we can do it a different time if it's too much. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm good. Play by play, we want the whole seventy two hours. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, I personally, I. Even to this day, I don't know that much about it. Like I, you know, so whatever, like I'm genuinely curious for me, but I know a lot of people would love to hear about, you know, what you and Tom did on that. Because you guys, I tell people what I do know. I mean, you essentially like saved the day. I mean, it was like if it wasn't for you two guys up there, you know, systematically taking out bad guys, you probably would have been a lot. The Rangers and as a whole up there on the dam would have probably been a lot worse off than they would have had you not been there. Yeah, so – um so, so we jumped in. Um, so at the time I was the battalion in Um So we jumped in. Where I, I jumped in with Seco. And um, you remember, I think his name was Green, the Seco commander at the time. Um, the reason I bring this up, as a colonel, he ended up committing suicide. Oh man! Um, I, I because know, of the dam? <laughs> no. Oh, for yeah, something it was, else. It was. Uh, no, so it was Bico was on the dam. So I, I jumped in um, with Seco. I was with Top Two at the time, and it was me and Mo and um, uh, Sergeant Major Birch. Okay. And uh, so I, I jump in. Is is you know it's exactly that you know every, what we practice. You jump in on a flat piece of ground. Uh, the CCT sets up a runway. Uh, we we defend everything around it. Um, you know when they start landing planes and stuff. Um, because CAG had, um, we jumped in with the the planes that had little birds on it. They went and landed the planes, little birds, and CAG went off and destroyed something. I don't know. <laughs> did what they do. Yeah, did did what they do. Uh, <laughs> then we ended up staying there for you know like three or four days. Um, well, we get a call that hey, on the we, airfield, on the airfield, yeah, okay. in the middle of nowhere, Iraq. Yeah, um, and it was literally like they could have picked a better piece of ground <laughs> to, to do this. It was crazy flat. And uh, so we get a call that um, there's going to be a convoy passing by and they want top two to jump on to be kind of a C2 element. Um, So we grabbed our bags and it was me, um, Kandarian, Major Kandarian at the time, uh, Mo and um, Sergeant Major. And uh, so we grabbed all of our crap and found a place to sit in the Humvee and we we jumped on there. Uh, We drove for about, I don't know, I'd say 10 hours or somewhere. And then Jeez. we stopped and we, we linked up with um, the uh, recce element for, for CAG. Um, they were, they were off the run there. And when they initially told us, Hey, we want you to go and uh, to Hadith the dam and seize the dam. Cause they was afraid they was going to blow it up um, and flood everything, everything below it. Yeah. And so we're talking to the recce element from, from the, from the tier one guys and they're like you're going where and because <laughs> they're like we got near it and it's there's like they're like that's where everybody's at like there's there's just nothing but bad guys there like we we 
their plan was initially to, to drive across it. But once they got near it, they're like, holy crap, no. So they came back and they're like, don't go up there. So we're like, well, that's not what we're hearing. So we call, like, we call back, we're like, hey, these guys are saying, don't go up there. And they're like, no, <laughs> we got Intel reports that they moved off. Oh my God. And I'm like, yeah. So I'm, I'm talking to Tommy and I'm like, hey, let's, let's do, let's do some pre, pre-planned fires. So I worked up some coordinates to, to some major points where I thought that, you know, there could be, so we, we dropped bombs on the way in and uh, using some of the intel that we got from, from the, the from the recce team. And they're like, hey, we know those guys here, we're guys here. So we just, so they went ahead and told us to, yeah, you're, you're going to go seize, seize the dam. So we did the pre-assault fires and uh, had B-52s drop, drop on them. And we had F-18s and little birds follow us the whole way. So, um, so we're thinking that we're going to get in this big gunfight all the way there. So we're like literally, you know, controlling the planes, uh, doors off, you know, that's back before we all had up armored anything. So we're like, you know, ready to shoot outside your door and we're go- as fast as the Humvees will drive. That's, that's how fast we're going. And we get there so fast. It's, it's in the middle of the night that we we're on top of the dam before we realize we're on the dam. Like when the Humvees skid to a stop, we're, we're literally at, at the locks part of the dam. And we're like, no shit. Like, so we're thinking, <laughs> oh, okay. Really? We're like, okay, th- they did move off. And um, so. Oh, you were expecting resistance like on the dam. Yeah. The, the, oh, okay. What the recce team was telling us, we're going to fight all the way there. And, oh, and then the intel we got from the rear saying there's nobody up there. And so we're like, all right. So we're going to go with what the recce team says. And. So we got all the way there and this is like two in the morning. And so they took two platoons to clear the, the main part of the dam. And we, we took a platoon back to, we passed these little group of buildings up on the hill that we saw at the beginning of the dam. Uh, at the, there was a road intersection that led to the town of Haditha. So we're like, yeah, we'll, we'll just take a platoon and talk to, we'll go, we'll go down here. We'll just set up down here. So we went down there uh, at this road intersection and there's like, 10 buildings up, up on a hill that we could see above us. And so we're still on the road that, that's kind of on top of the dam. And the, the little birds are still flying around. And one of the uh, Humvees drove down the road a little bit to kind of out, out, out of view. And then, you know, this huge freaking firefight erupts and the little bird starts going crazy. And we're like, what the hell's going on? And then you hear somebody yelling for a medic and the, and the Humvee drives back up and it is just shot to hell. Oh, and man. The dude, everybody in that was wounded. We're like, what the hell's going on? And there's we the Kandarian. So we're we're I'm trying to set up my my satcom antenna, and Kandarian he, he looks over to where the, the Humvee just drove up, and there's these two dudes or three dudes walking, and the dude in the center has has his gun up on his his shoulders. And um remember Jesse Navarro. I don't think so. No. He's, he was he's third bet. And uh, Landers was the platoon sergeant at the time. Okay. Jack Landers, you probably remember yep. him. Yep. Um, yep. So uh, he spins around. And he's like, hey. And he, he's like, "Is those are your guys? And everybody turns around and they're like, no. And then so Kandarian immediately like engages them and, and shoots them. <laughs> and then as soon as he shoots, like the whole hillside erupts on us. Like all the buildings are like nearly now they're all just shooting. So we, we you know, Keystone Cops, we, we dive down and uh, I like literally landed on top of Kandarian. And it was one of those funny moments. I'm like, what'd you do? You know, like, <laughs> so we're, you keep that we're, yeah, we're, yeah. So they're, they're engaging us. There's machine guns on top of us. And um, so the, at the time the overrun call was um, uh, sprint. And um, so we're like debating on whether or not, like, there's nothing we could do. Like, we could, yeah. we could, we couldn't even sit up. So we're like, you know, do we make this call? And we we were kind of going over the how historic would be if a ranger element had to make that call. Yeah. And so I'm like, he's like, make it. I'm like, all right. So I got on the sat to call, make a sprint call, and uh, an RPG takes out my my sat antenna. So no I'm like, way. I'm like, oh shit. And. Um, Luckily, Tommy heard something was happening and called AWACS and, uh, and, and started pushing fire. Like, magically, I, I started hearing, like, an F8, F-18 
they're 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 on Victor, so they were pretty far off. They were like, "Hey, we're we're on our way." So I'm like, "What the hell?" And so as we we got to a point to where we could start shooting back, um, we started hearing shit behind us, and then we turned around, and there was um, a mortar tube on an island behind us shooting mortars at us. So we're getting mortars from behind us, and then machine guns in front of us. So we're like, "We're." Fucked. And, uh, <laughs> So I, I was trying to get the F-18's eyes on the mortar tube. So I figured I'd, I'd go with that first. And it's not seeing it. It's not, believe me, they, they, you know, it was almost not believing that it was on an island. They're like, no, it's probably close. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's on an island. And this kid jumps up and I hear black back blast clear. And uh, so we all turned around and he, and he shoots. And I thought it was a, a Gustav at the time. So he shoots. So we're all watching the, the rocket leave. And the rocket you know, about hundred meters and goes straight up. So I'm like, Shit, it blew a fin or something. So <laughs> I'm thinking he shot with the Gustav. That thing turns it was over. A javelin or something? It was a javelin. It turns oh, okay. over, it comes straight back <laughs> down on the tube. And <laughs> that's awesome. It. We're like, holy <laughs> shit. I've never seen one. I, one, I didn't know they had it. All right. <laughs> but I've never seen one shot live. And then as soon as that exploded, the F-18 saw it. So I dropped right on top of that. So that was gone and we can focus back over here. And so they had where I was, I had three, I had three major machine guns kind of on us. And one was really close and two was kind of far away. And I started at this time, aircraft just start checking in, start checking in. So I'm, I'm stacking them. And um, I had the F-18s checked off. I had some A-10s come in. And so one was kind of too close that I thought, um, even for, for guns. So, we got with the, the, the Patea, the PL and the, the platoon sergeant and, and Kandarian. We're like, well, if we, you know, if we rush this one, if we get the, the Rangers to, to try to take out this one, I said, I, I could probably get the A-10s, hit the other two with the guns. Cause it's, it was, it was that close, it, too close to drop, but they could probably do it with guns. Um, but we'd have to lay down. And so, <laughs> yeah. So they had, um, they had uh, these, so we, we got two gun teams. They, they called two gun teams up. And um, so we're talking and they're like, yeah, we're going to have the, the gun teams rush it. And I'm telling them, I'm like, I, I said, if I shoot first, had the a 10 shoot first, they'll probably stop. And that should give them a second to get up and, and get going. And we could all kind of lay down uh, to help these guys. That's going to rush the, 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 this like World War II rush of machine gun. Yeah. And, um, so, so that, that's kind of our plan. And I hear, the uh, uh, landers briefing these 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 kids, and uh, I hear somebody say, you know, Fuck, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, well, you know, maybe maybe that's not the best idea to have these guys rush a machine gun. And I'm like, I said, hey, man, landers, I, I said, I can maybe, you know, have them do this one, but if I change the angle or something, it's like, no, 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 no. He says that was the kids that didn't get picked. They were pissed they get. They didn't. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, that's the ranger mentality, right? The, the ranger that's, private. Yeah, that's ranger. And, uh, that is ranger. So, so sure enough, I'm like, all right. So I, I told, told him, I'm like, hey. So we all kind of got in line. And um, I said, as soon as you hear the burp of the, the A-10s, I said, they're probably going to stop shooting. I said, then it's kind of our trigger. I said, as soon as we had, I had to talk to flight lead. I said, one and two, that come in, shooter, shooter. And, and um, you got take them out as, as close to simultaneous as possible. And, um, and then, cause we're going to have these guys rush this one and they're like, all right. So as soon as I get them cleared hot and then, you know, you could see the smoke first. And as soon as I heard the burr, everybody kind of got online and, and went after them. These two kids freaking, you know, running and shooting the whole time. And, and they, 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 I don't know if they killed them or, or the suppressive fire killed them, but these kids was on top of them. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> and, uh, so that, that allow us to, to move up about 20 meters to get cover. Like that was our first, you know, we, we had to shoot these guys to get cover, you know, so that, that, that kind of went on for, for, took us about 12 hours to get about maybe 75 meters to, to occupy a building. Jeez. So, so it was just nonstop, uh, just, you know, strafing where I can, drop where I can. Um, it was one of those things, the, the, um, not the Hellfire missile, but the, um, what was the other missile? The air to Maverick. Maverick. Like, I never shot a live one. Like, you know, they always rail. Nobody it. does. Yeah. 
Yeah, they, they always railed it, and you, you would pretend. And I right. bet I shot, I bet I shot or controlled eight of them that morning. Jesus. Because they were going like, because I had had the smallest as I could to, to move up. Yeah. And so at that point, we were able to move up to to occupy some buildings, and it seemed like at that point they they shifted focus and then they regrouped and went went to where Tommy was. So that gave us a little bit to, to move move up any further. And like, yeah, a, go get Tom. Yeah. <laughs> we were like <laughs> place, and uh, so they went on that time. Yeah, it was the same way. I'm like. You, know, you got to breathe a little bit, but Jesus, it's one of those things you you, you remember seeing the, the sun come up. You remember seeing the sun go down. You remember seeing the sun come up. I remember um, Kandarian would come around because I had so the first off lamb got hit with shrapnel. Um, the second one uh, we just had to have two. The second one got shot, and then we called from the rear to, to get a third one. So the third one came on the helicopter when they were when they were dropping off bullets. And um, that was like the last one in the battalion. And uh, I remember Kandarian was like, how much are these things? I'm like, they're pretty fucking expensive. Pretty pricey, yeah. Yeah. And um, so the third one got hit with the artillery shell when they started shooting artillery at us. Jeez. But they didn't start shooting artillery at us until the second day. Um, so the second day, they were direct laying the tubes on us. And they we kind of figured there was a, um, a spotter or something out there. So we're 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 doing so what me and mo had to do is they they would shoot um artillery at us in the the time the the the, the whistle the flight was only like two or three seconds so we knew it was direct lay they was just yeah. right on us so me and mo came up with this great idea like hey we're gonna do crater analysis because uh so <laughs> we, we mo talked me into it he's like yeah we were kind of taught that in in FO school, I'm like, all right, like, let's. He, try. that dude's a wealth of knowledge. So if he'd have said it, I'd have been like, yeah, let's do that, yeah. Mo. Whatever yeah. you say, so, man, because he knew everything about so it. Fire sport. We explode. We run out there. We try to get a back azimuth. I call it A10s. I think from this position, go on this azimuth. And we were able to find some some tubes that way. And, you know, nice. Like, so, because we didn't know really where they were because they were hiding them in, in the town. And so yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were getting the back azimuth of them. And then that. You didn't have any radar or anything, like any QR no, or whatever it is. No, no, no. But we got caught, um, kind of in there too long. Like I was making my call from it in, in there, and I was, you know, it took me a little longer than usual. Here I climbed out and was heading back to to the to the building, and then as I was crushing up over the hill, that the they hit, they shot another one off off the same tube, and that's one one that hit me or landed there. And McLean was with the FO at the time. He, he had the 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 um um the map and that was the same one that hit um oh the the kid that lost his eyes so yeah it hit and we went kind of flying flying up over mo mo ran out and grabbed me pulled me back and my eardrums were ruptured the cleans eardrops were ruptured and he he was still it's funny he was still holding (laughs) he was still holding the map but the map was ripped in half like he was still holding it you know he had his hand Blazing two pieces of paper. He was like, he's like, I, I think I got the grid. I'm like, you ain't got it, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that, that's that's kind of the the that, that kind of went on for another day and a half doing doing that. Um, we were able to find almost all the tubes. Um, we they, we had them down to one tube, and then like one of the funny stories that that I always tell about it. So we had um, Star, Star Major uh, Birch was up there at the time. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard this. I think I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. So, I heard this part before. Um, we for those who don't know, Sergeant Major Birch, he's like the badass of badasses. Like he's yeah. like the yeah, most he's, badass guy ever. Yeah. But uh, you're talking about when he took my weapon? Well, do I, I, he took your weapon or did he th- I know he took somebody's weapon, like a, no, somebody's so, weapon system. So, well, so I'm, I'm running. No, no, go with this one. I don't know this one yet. Oh. But. I'm running from one side of the, we had this L-shaped building that we were using for cover. So I, I run from one cor- corner until they figure out where I was. And then like, nobody wanted to be around me because I was drawing fire. So I, I, kept, <laughs> I was moving forward in the, in that I run the other side of the building. And then like a couple of times I did like a baseball slide and my, my freaking, my, I kept hitting my weapon on the ground and the, you know, it was driving, you know, <laughs> Ranger, Ranger uh, NCO's nuts. You're like, oh. yeah, yeah. And finally, Birch come over there and, and he and he grabbed me, he pulled me against the wall and he took my weapon off of me. I'm like, God damn, like in the middle of firefight. 
Uh, am I, am I trouble, sir? He's, like, he's like, listen, if they shoot at you, we'll all shoot at you. He said, you're killing more if you're radio. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> I went back <laughs> and they're, they're setting my weapon for like three hours, leaning against the wall. Hey. Uh, <laughs> that was yeah that was I've got that's like work. that's a quintessential like uh thing they always tell tag p or like jtax it's yeah. like your weapon is your radio you know yeah your yeah. secondary weapon is you know and that's, well, a, that's they, they were far enough to where like the snipers can engage them like Bur birch birch had a he he came off the plane with the sniper weapon that's what i heard yeah yeah and, it, and he was uh, a sniper from before right yeah, I mean, yeah he was yeah. A sniper up, at, up at the the tier one unit and he was just like legendary up there he was just wasting just wasting dudes and jeez oh, and he was just like you know calm the whole time so uh, during that whole time about every four or five hours um kandarian would make this remember the the chocolate brownies uh out of the mres yeah oh, yeah. yeah so he'd make a chocolate brownie he put peanut butter on it and put as many salt or sugar packets on it as he can and he, he'd run over to me and shove it in my mouth so I was on the sugar high for like three or four hours. <laughs> and then it got to the point where, you know, the, I, you start having crashes. And then that's when, um, uh, like the third, like third day, almost fourth day. Um, so Nick and um, Hank House was hearing all this in the rear. And they were telling him like, hey, we've heard Brandy and um, – Tommy on the radio for like three days straight, like they need a break. So they jumped on the helicopter. They weren't letting anybody come in, but because they the helicopters come in, they they slow down, they push ammo off, and then they they take back off. And uh, they wouldn't let they wouldn't let anybody come in. And um, on one of those resupplies, Nick and Hank House just said, "Fuck it, we're jumping off." So they jumped off with the ammo, and they made their way up there. And that's first. first that's awesome. Year. Yeah. Did they, uh, did you hand the mic over? Did you, were they able to get any controls or? Yeah. Yeah. So they, it didn't dawn on me at first. Like I was, and this is another funny Mark Foster story. <laughs> so I'm there like, are many. I'm sitting there droning and, and, and Nick's like, Hey man, I got this. I'm like, okay. So I went back and kind of laid down and I was out. Like I, my body finally shut down. I was fucking out. And um, so Mark calls for a sit rep. And I told Tommy before I lay down, I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna crash for a few hours. Nick's gonna take it on this side. So we we just we just uh, declared a, a Beano line. We used the river. Uh, I controlled everything on this side. He controlled everything on that side. We kept our stacks different. Uh, we had different IPs and all this other stuff. Textbook, um, man, it's awesome. And um, so I, I told him like, hey, if you don't hear me, I said I'm, I'm just gonna be I'm gonna crash for a few hours. And um, so he had Hank House on, on his side. I was going to say, did Hank head, head over to help him out? Yeah. That's yeah. Good. So uh, Foster calls for a sit rep and <laughs> he gets old Tommy. He's like, hey, man, where, where's, where's, uh, I think I was three, one or three, two. I was whatever the NCIC was. Yeah. And, um, he's like, he's down for the count, man. So Foster runs back. Oh, my God. I can only thought, imagine what he thought. <laughs> the top like, Randy's killed. Jesus. So Austin wakes up and runs to the talk. he's like, like, you know, expecting to get the, the whole brief of, you know, how, what, where, and all this stuff. He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, we heard 3 2 is down. He's like, he is down. They're like, holy shit. Like, oh, you know, we're going to spin up the, 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 uh, the, Metal or whatever. And okay. I'm like, I'm like, no, he's asleep. <laughs> They're like, Foster, are you fucking <laughs> Man, I can't imagine what he was thinking, though. I mean, well, you know, the that's... second time, the day later, so Q gets hit, and um, Q, so Q's team gets hit, and um, they he's on the bird, so they morphined him up, and he's on the bird. He leaves Iraq heading towards Germany, and um, when he lands in Germany, he had this this um, vision under morphine that I was on his bird. So when he finally gets a call, his Gwen, who he's married to at the time, he's he's asking about me. He's, he's like, "How's Brandy?" He's like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "He's he would got hurt on the dam. He was on my plane." So it was a, it was another Crazy, one. Man. Yeah. So they call back. They're like, "Hey, can, can you confirm Brandy's still at the dam?" They're like, "Yeah." He's and like, <laughs> <laughs> how soon did he get? How close were those two incidences? Like, how so many... after the after the initial firefight before they shoot start shooting artillery at us. Um, 
um, Q's team crossed the dam. So I remember when they went across. I mean, oh, shit. And uh, so it was, they had like the kind of break in action there uh, before they started turning the, the, the heavy guns on us. So Q and them went, went across the dam to, to go on the other side. And, um, and then they start, started back up. And what, it probably, it was the same, same time that we were getting shelled on the dams when, when they got the lit up with, the, with their team. That's Dang. when, um, um, wasn't Chapman, was it Chapman? Who was it? Sather. Sather. Sather, yeah, Sather. Yeah. yeah. Well, that whole team got, man, they were all messed up. I know. I know uh, Swede was on there. Um, yeah. When Lancaster on there. Yep, yep. I'll tell you, I the, the only was. vehicle I've ever seen worse than that was Schleich's. You ever see pictures of Schleich's vehicle? No. It was, What's up with, I never even heard about it. Dude, it was ripped in half. It was totally ripped in half. When was this? Oh, uh, five. Yeah. Yeah. Hit a, hit you talk about that? Are you done, Brandy? Is that all you got? I mean, yeah. first one, the only thing I want to say about that was I can't believe it. That seems what you and Tom did on that dam seems like a silver star is not enough. I don't know if I'm like being, I don't know if it's because I know you guys and we're buddies, but it seems like you should have gotten a little, maybe a little more than that. Like, it, what, what well, was the decision then, made? Well, back then, I was the highest one given out. Um, Oh, okay. Like nobody was giving out distinguished service crosses or anything. It was, or... Yeah, but it was. Uh, everybody, at, like, I, I got it. No, at yeah. that time, at that's at that time the silver star was not to diminish anybody else's getting a silver star, you know, later on. But at that time, people were, they saw the silver star as that. Like that's like this is a big deal. A silver star is a huge honor. You guys deserve it. So I could probably see how that was like. <clears throat> you know, the the way. They justified that or whatever. Well, look, but to look, me, I well look at what they DFC did. might be better. With Somalia, they gave all those dudes in Somalia silver stars. Now, like they were, they went back and they're like, "Wow, okay, it. Yeah. yeah, nice, yeah. yeah." So, so Matt, um, I'll let him tell you tell your story. But um, he was inbound to seventeenth. He was on his as SF rotation, and we just hired him for the seventeenth. And then, dude, I saw the. Pictures on Cipher. I, I didn't know if he was alive. Like <laughs> it's like, did we had to find somebody else or what? Like, holy <laughs> shit! Is he still coming? The story's <laughs> even the, his story's even crazier because uh, I'll even tell you. It's well, real quick before we get the Matt story. Do you know the only person that wasn't in Iraq during that time? <laughs> I know. So I felt screw bad you guys. I felt um, bad. We're sitting there in Afghanistan, not doing anything, and all of a sudden Iraq kicks off, and we're like. Twiddling our thumbs. I'm like, hey, do you guys need any help? And I'm like, nope, you're good. Just stay over there with, with your team. Uh, like, that sucked. <laughs> so Matt, go ahead. I, I had not I have not heard the story, so I'm anxious to hear it. Oh, yeah, I got a – so I went over there initially. Uh, God, I, it was, when rotation started in 05. I want to say October. That sounds about right. And um, I was uh, I got pushed out to Lawara, uh, Camp Tillman. As most people, you know, probably knew it, um, but yeah. everybody called it still Lawara. But I was, that's where Pat Tillman was killed um, okay. when uh, 275 was working out of there. So I was with a uh, ODA 344 at the time, and it's funny. I still talk to all those guys. Really, really good team. It was, uh, I think, the third or fourth time that team had rotated into that area. So they were, you know, the Fox that was there that uh, ended up dying in, in that incident. Uh, he knew all the locals. I mean, when they did, key, you know, KLEs, key leader engagements, uh, like people listened, you know, I mean, because the, it, it was one of those that goes back to the SF tenants of you got to build rapport. And anybody who knows anything about Afghanistan and, you know, why we probably, you know, Google on the whole diatribe of why we failed over there um, was mainly because you had to build rapport. You had to build trust with those people. I mean, you know, it's like Americans yeah. are telling we're going to we're going to help you, you know, and the Taliban's coming in and punishing you if you're helping the Americans, but telling you they're going to help you. So uh, there's a real good book, if anybody wants to read it, called Three Cups of Tea. That uh, really talks about that relationship only. Well, so get to this team, um, replace the combat controller there. I was running with a – actually, I, I think I'm still probably one of the only TACPs to run with the Jaguar call sign. So uh, I'm a call sign Jag 1-6. And get out there, replace the, the guy Fred Baker. Uh, first night first night we're there, and I think we've done a full handover. And um, – one of our OPs gets overrun out on the Dasha there. So we end up QRFing and and so I drive 
So they, they say, hey, Schleich, you're driving. So I'm under <laughs> nods driving, trying yeah. to, you know, I've already, you know, put calls in that we're going to choose some contact. We're driving out there. Well, I'm probably the last guy that should be driving. Trying exactly. To talk That's what video. I was just thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so we end up hitting a big, hit, hit the big rock. I break a half shaft, lift this thing all the way out to the center where we had, we had an OP sitting out there. Um, and it's all right. The team starts like, Hey, and Bray was talking about you know, the sprint call. Our call site, our call then was tablecloth. So he goes, Hey, call tablecloth. Um, you know, we got friendly position over and we need everything here. Got it. So they, so they started pushing all the assets towards me and, and a uh, gunship showed up that hadn't tweaked my first round. Hit the uh, so that was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, so my, my first call for fire with this team, I, it ends up about 200 meters behind us and hits the MSS. Oh my uh, God. What was not my fault? Uh, because of course. The guy's like, no, of course. He's like, he's like, we're not tweaked, man. We, we were taken off from Bagram when we got the call. So, so I check fired those guys and ended up getting some other a Go and else. figure your guns out and then yeah. come back later. Yeah. So, so that kind of leads to the whole, where the kind of where this, where that ties in is like I said, they kept having me drive and I kept telling the team, sorry, like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm not any good to you driving. Yeah. Like I either need to be in the back of the vehicle or in one of the back seats talking to assets so that if we do get hit, you know, I can, I can focus on that as opposed to, you know, driving a vehicle and trying to E and E us around, you know, some place. Right. Um, or push through. So we're fast forward now, I don't know, a month or so, November 15th. And we're going out, we're going to go do a link up at the pack mill on the border and just, just talk to these guys. Cause they mm -hmm. kept, these kept coming over and attacking us. And we knew that they were just flowing through, uh, coming up out of, um, uh, Miriam Shaw. So it's like, okay, whatever. And if you, if you guys know where Lawara was, there was like Lawara, Vermel, Skin. It was all like right along, just all kind of south of Oregon and, and that area there, right on the border. So yeah. our base was literally right on the border. Um, so we're cruising along and, and, um, I was, uh, I was in the back seat and, and we, we stopped it. We kept seeing these guys coming and we stopped at one point and cause our, our Fox kept talking to these dudes like, Hey man, like where are you guys coming from? Like wh who's at the OP right now? It's all these A and A guys. Well, they weren't even. A there was no A and A at the time. They were, you know, our, our ASF guys, our Afghan, basically, you know, uh, hired guns. And right. so, where the hell are you guys coming from? So we're talking to them, and, and finally, the, the fox tells me, he goes, "Hey, dude, he's like, look, I, I can't, you know, I can't keep driving and talking to these guys. You know, let's swap out." So I'm like, all right, yeah, cool, man. So I'm, I'm like out taking pictures, like, oh, this is. What beautiful yeah. land from New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just doing dumb stuff. And uh, so we swapped out. Um, I took off, and we probably drove 25 meters and, and hit an IED. Jesus. And, uh, so, you know, just initially I thought we got rear-ended. That's what it felt like. Oh, really? Like it, it felt like we got rear-ended. Yeah, I mean, I, if, if that makes any sense, because the vehicle came, like, it lifted up off the ground and was thrown off the road. Um, so once all the dust clears and, and I kind of get my faculties about me, like trying to figure out what's going on, um, I realize that, you know, the, the Fox that was behind me is, is now, you know, he's, he's in, in a bad situation. Uh, I'm trying to like figure out, uh, you know, finally somebody goes IED. So when somebody goes IED, I immediately hit the gas to go, you know, reaction to contact, <laughs> right, like, right. To stop on the gas and we're not going anywhere. So like I said, it's a, as anybody who's probably been in Heather Bell running an IED, you're kind of like trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Oh, yeah. Wow. Jesus. So then, so by that time, we knew we'd hit an IED. We knew things were bad. Um, it had basically, it sheared the back of the up armor off, um, shot one of our guys like 150 meters, one of our Afghans. And he didn't make it out <laughs> oh, in the field. But I remember getting up, like I remember getting out of the vehicle and, and trying to look around and, and still try, I'm still trying to process what just happened. Right. Um, my glasses are gone. You know, my my head's gone. My my radio is broke. Um, but it's kind of kind of hanging there. You know, some antenna. Um, so I look out and I see these two guys. Like I'm not kidding. Like 150 meters away. And I'm like, I was like, ah, I was like, hey, we got you know, contacts north. And not realizing it was actually the guy. Two guys were in our vehicle. Oh. Um, yeah. So anyway, I mean, like I said, it, that was pretty much the, the extent of it. I ended up. Um, so nobody, it wasn't command detonated or anything. It was just like a. It was pressure just, plate. Yeah, it was a double pressure, stack yeah. and I, yeah, double stack and a tank mine is what they think. It was God, about a, it could have uh, been so much a, worse, man. It was about a six foot by six foot hole, about five feet deep. Um, like I said, it it, it sheared the whole back of the Humvee off. Um, 
But and what were you sitting before you switched? Right where I was sitting. Yeah. So that's it. That you, that it the fox. The fox was killed. Uh, Jim Jim Oshner, our first class oh Oshner. So he was killed instantly. Our our turret gunner got hurt pretty bad. I ended up taking uh, shrapnel in the head. Um, I ended up passing out a couple times during the situation when I was controlling air. Didn't even yeah. realize that I, I woke up on the ground, kind of got up and brought myself to. Um, I didn't I didn't know I, anything had happened. I just thought I got my because I got a little concussion. Uh, wasn't until later that later that night we got a tens overhead. I got some Apaches in there. Um, you know, just didn't really. Did, there was no follow on. It wasn't a complex attack. Yeah. Uh, so we got everybody medevaced out that we needed to. We ended up going back, cleaning, you know, cleaning ourselves up. It was a pretty right. pretty messy situation. Um, and then um, that that night, I realized that uh, I couldn't move my neck, um, and I couldn't I couldn't turn my head, and my neck had swollen up, and I had a really bad headache. So I went in finally to go see the doc, and uh, he looked at me, and, and I had a, all my I'd never taken my hat off. I had my Harley Davidson hat, which I still had. Yeah. So you know, another thing like, hey, maybe you should wear a vehicle. Um, you know, or wear a helmet in a vehicle because uh, I was wearing a softball cap, typical SF thing. You know, with yeah, my pelt, yeah. blew, my, blew my pelters off my head, blew everything. Um, but I had a bunch of matted blood, and I, I'd taken trap. Oh my head. god! So I ended up getting medevaced out that night up to uh, Bagram. And uh, Jesus, I didn't, I'd never heard this story before. Why haven't I heard the story before? Uh, it's a couple yeah. days in I have spent about two weeks up there recovering before they would let me go back out. They actually let me go back out with a helmet waiver. I thought it was kind of ironic. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, no, no. Like, I'll like, take it this time. Yeah. Put, like, you can't put any pressure on your deck. So, <laughs> so that limited me. Like, you can't go out on night patrols with MVGs because I had to wear a helmet. So, uh, so then I finally got, about a month later, I finally got cleared off and ended up going out. And that's when we really started. We got into like our biggest fight uh, at that location that I'd been in, where yeah. we just got overran again. The base got overran. And we ended up smoking a bunch of dudes. So, that's like when that, that movie, The Outpost, first came out. I thought that was your was one of your one of your positions because because it sounded just like the same exact story you told me about you guys getting overran. I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. We, I mean, we, yeah, we were down on. I mean, we were like I said, we're down by South Oregon E, and um, the Outpost was up in the Corongal by Abad, um, which obviously you know a bunch of us have been up and down that valley before. But no, I mean, it was a, it was a similar situation. It was a it was, I mean, it was pretty exciting. And if you got time, I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown of it. Yeah. 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 yeah I'd love to hear it. Yeah. So, you know, so I get back to the, I get back to the, the team and uh, we're, we were actually combat ineffective um, with the dudes that we had lost, the guys that had gotten hurt. Um, we had another guy, we, we'd done a controlled debt on a cache we found. Uh, it was full of red phosphorus. A bunch of the team got exposed to it. One of the guys started having seizures because of it. So we were down to, we were literally down to a split team. Um, right? So we were like men force uh, for the ODA out there. Uh, we had a platoon of 82nd there with us. I was going to ask him uh, if you should, yeah, were sharing with fire, him. Field artillery guys, some contractors. Laura was a real small base, um, yeah. really small base. So like, well, so one night, man, you know, just typical, nothing really, nothing exciting. We, we may have been, you know, enjoying ourselves a little bit. And <laughs> so everybody goes to bed. I get up because I got I to gotta hit the head. So I walk out and we had... As soon as you walked out of the Tillman Lodge, the, the talk was to your right, and, and you're facing facing north. And then uh, there was three bathrooms, latrines, outdoor latrines there, made out of wood. And then you made a made a hard right hook. And then there was uh, the piss tubes and the showers and everything. So I'm I'm in there and I'm, I'm taking a leak and I'm like, did to do, you know, no big deal. And all of a sudden I hear gunfire start breaking out. And I think it's one of the because we had OPs all around it. We had OP uh, one, two, and three right behind us um so we sat in a bowl and then op4 was out on the dashta way out in the middle of nowhere we ended up uh so i was like like eh, it's probably one of the afghans you know ndn adn just being <laughs> stupid on pkm well then it, it kind of picks up a little bit i'm like that's that's a little unusual i mean because now it's now it's like sustained shooting yeah. so i'm like what the hell's going on it's like turn around i walk out and as soon as i walk to make the right hand turn to go back to the to the our, our barracks an RPG goes screaming through and like blows up right by the shooters. Jeez. And I was just like, holy shit, we're under attack. <laughs> so, uh, oh my so God. I take off running. So I take off, I run to the jock real quick. I was like, hey, man, I think we're under attack. And they're like, they're like, yeah, OP fours in contact and all three OPs are in contact. So I run inside to the thing and I'm banging everybody's door. Like, hey, wake up. We're, in, we're under attack. 
And all I hear is one guy go, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. That's all I get. Right? So I'm, not even, I'm just like, no, dude. About that time, yeah. rounds went through the roof, with the metal roof. Oh. And I hear somebody go, holy shit, we're under attack. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So everybody oh, gets up. I, ended up. I was in pajama bottoms and a brown T-shirt. And uh, I threw on my kit um, and my helmet and grabbed my radio. And, and Amelia ran to the wall with my weapon. Um, and because they had pushed everybody, we had it was Americans on OP1 and Americans on OP4, which was way out. They had already pushed the Americans off OP1, they pushed the Afghans off of two and three. Um, and they were shooting at us with our own weapons from up on the OPs. They had uh, set off an IED at the front gate, um, so they breached the gate there. And oh, they the had, bad they, guys they, were shooting at you. Oh, yeah, 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 oh okay. Talking. Yeah, Taliban was in play. It was like a green yeah. and blue or something. Yeah, and then OP4, the Taliban had gotten into contact with each other at the base of OP4. So they didn't know what, so the OP didn't know what the hell was going on. So um, so that's this whole thing's going down, which is you know, like, figure it out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, we so, got to focus on those guys, they're, they're handling it. So yeah, so in, anyway, you know, it turns out I'm I'm up there, like I said, in my pajama bottoms and t-shirt. The uh we had a uh, 23-2 that sat right there in the corner. And then we had another 23-2 that sat up on OP-1. And the Taliban was trying to get the 23-2 oh, on OP-1, turn it down on the camp. Um, fortunately, an RPG had gotten stuck, had, had hit it, and had disla and it broke the uh, teeth, so they couldn't turn it. So oh, that would have been, been just devastating. That would have been horrible, man. Yeah, Jeez, so, so our guy gets on the 23. He's, you know, scra- raking the mountain. The 82nd guys that came off the OP, they got overran. We just had them holding a uh, IR light in the air so we could control airstrikes all around there. And then aircraft started. So once again, I, you know, called, you know, because they hadn't, they, of course, they hadn't already, they hadn't even changed the tablecloth, but call sign or, you know, uh, in the spin jet. So I'm like, hey, this is, yeah, this is Jaguar 6, tablecloth, tablecloth, tablecloth. <laughs> so everything starts showing yeah. up. They're like, didn't you do this already? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Heard it before. So yeah, so we ended up dropping a shit ton of bombs there. Um, pretty much killed. Uh, killed a lot, ended up killing a lot of dudes, which was good. Repelled the attack. Um, nice. I mean, it was it was pretty it was pretty interesting. Um, yeah. Had had the Taliban succeeded, what their plan was was to attack OP four. They'd watched us, you know, QRF after that the whole time. Right. So the whole base would have been exposed. Um, had had they made had they not attacked each other at the base of OP four, <laughs> then uh, <laughs> their plan and and then started shooting early at one, two, and three. They probably would have. Uh, I would have completely taken over the base. Gee, many Christmas. But yeah, that was a uh, that was a that was the last big big engagement we had at uh, Lawara. And then a couple like two weeks later, we ended up sh- uh, shutting it down and uh, collapsing back to uh, Bagram. That's amazing, man. I- I've always said, man. I'm you know, and this is one thing. I, I wish you could have. I wish it could have been captured better. But there was. I, I will. I'm, I'll go to my grave saying this. There was never a more well oiled more refined killing machine than the task force in Iraq in, in the mid to mid to late two thousands. Like, yeah, I, I've tried to tell, I've tried to explain to people how, you know, you know, boom, a TST drops, man. And your, your, your beeper goes off. You walk in, you grab your products, you brief, you step to the vehicles, be it rotary wing strikers, whatever you go out, you hit a target, you know, jackpot, you know, touchdown, rip you know rip back and just keep doing it i mean and just the the level of complexity that was going on in iraq doing that type of stuff controlling airstrikes i mean think about controlling airstrikes in baghdad when you would have three overlapping losses right you know and it's so many different players out on the battlefield like those are days i wish i wish i don't know how to capture it but i wish somebody would i don't know if we'll ever get to that level again but yeah. if you could have taken a ranger platoon or, you know, an, an STS or, you know, a tag troop and, or, you know, and, and I'll even give the seals their credit and <laughs> throwing those guys anywhere in the world. And dude, they could have taken on a battalion of any other force and oh, just yeah. destroyed them. Yep. I mean, it was just, there was, there was something to be said about, like I said, how, how efficient and just lethal guys were during that time frame. And I'm not taking anything away from the guys in Afghanistan, but Afghanistan was a different fight. I mean, For guys sure. were, Guys were going out. They were staying out. You know, the, the Merrill, the Darby, all those missions were extremely, but just day in, day out for years on end in Iraq, man. You know, yeah. it, it was. And I always thought of Iraq as like, it was, a, it was a little more hairy, man. It was a little more gritty over there. Like in Afghanistan, it was dangerous, but it was like the Wild West. You could kind of like, you know, there was, it, it just seemed 
Iraq was just a different animal, you know, with the with that Raz complexity and just the the different type of enemy you're fighting and just seemed it seemed different, you know. I don't know, it, but uh, yeah, it was a uh, but yeah, they kid, man, you're right. That was amazing. And I told I tried to convey that to people, and they just can't grasp like how the lethality of those guys, you know, the, yeah. that of that that group of people. Nate Holton's got some great. He's got some great pictures where it shows it shows like the planning slide for like downtown, like Baghdad, you know, or what what was the uh, ninety six? Is it a mess? Is it just like ninety six Alpha Romeo or whatever it was that area? Oh, it's just. I mean, it's just circle on top of. I mean, you had aircraft stacked at every hundred feet. In overlapping Rosses flying into each other's airspace, Jeez. you know. I, I mean, it's just it was insane. Uh, yeah, and just the ISRS that we had those guys, a little proficiency they had, the fighter crews, the like act, a, everybody. Like the yeah. TTPs that that uh, we had to come up with as far as you know having fighters attack in the middle of a gunship's rotation and everybody right. up, like all that stuff was you know was was kind of you know pickup game stuff. The you know how to run a man, and uh, that's kind of set the the basis of, of the training now. Not all the, the JTAX now that they all know how to do that. Yeah, back yeah. then th- it was new. Like, it's like how do we figure this out? Let me call this gunship. gunship out. Like, what do you guys no think? Way, man, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That gunship shooting at this. Yeah, that's right. He is. Yeah, I mean, you and, you're gonna shoot. just a level of that, level of that. Because I think I think I think that the busiest time I got was probably at the dam. I had 19. That's what I tell you. I had 19 sets of fighters. So those sets are twos and fours. Like it's not 19 aircraft. That's right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 And, and so it's. God, it's, I can't yeah. even imagine. That's the, At that the point, first, you're just an, an ATC guy. Well, you know, well, it was easy when you had that many targets because the first, yeah, I would say 36 aircraft that I talked to left Winchester before bingo. And, but that is easy to do when you got drop on. Yeah. yeah. This, you know, and that's and what I tell people. Like, that's what I do know about it. That's one thing I have heard about it, is like, it, it, there was it was such a target rich environment down there for you and Tom, and then later Nick and Hank. But like, it was just like Winchester, Winchester. Win, I mean, that's just amazing. Nobody, people can't fathom it. You know, I mean, because we go to the range all the time, and you know, they either run out of ammo. It, it's just, it's amazing what you guys did. With, <laughs> it's just it's such a yeah, unique, no. crazy situation. Yeah, we had um, so. You can tell any anytime you, you start getting guys by the second day, like their second time in, that they knew what to expect. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, because they had gone home, rested, yes. got rearmed, and gotten another yeah. plane to yeah. come out. So, okay, so they're they, they kind of knew what to expect. And we had an F 16, it was his first time, like he got pushed over there, and he didn't like the fact that they were stacked that close. And <laughs> Tommy Stack was get close. out of here, Rook. <laughs> we got- <laughs> and he literally. <laughs> like, we're engaging with small arms. I'm trying to get him to hit this target. And he flies through his, his solution and he pulls back off. And we're all like, what just happened? And he's he like, drop? no, he didn't drop. He's like, huh. he's like, I, I wanted to get a good, good look at, it. let me come back around. I'm like, negative. Come back around. Like, Next one in go. Cause you got <laughs> eight tens are like, I can strike it right now. What is he doing? <laughs> I'm sure those guys are just like, Get, get me in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, to have this guy, you know, with the regular cast mentality, I'll fly through it. Okay, that looks good. Let me sit back up. I'm like, no, you're like, you're, I don't, you're gone. You had your turn, buddy. Leave get my... to the back of the line. Yeah. Which for 16, he's probably out of gas anyway by that point. But so. yeah, yeah. And so that's that's the one where I got in trouble because uh, I cussed at him on the mic. Cause, oh. uh, and uh, that got made all the way back to the rear. And the uh, hotel, hey. hotel was the, uh, he was a colonel at the time, he was the regimental commander. Yeah, and he's like the JTAC said what, and then he's like, well, what happened? He's like, well, he exactly. wouldn't engage. He wouldn't engage. So the Brandon called him a pussy, and he's, he's, like, <laughs> he's like, I don't see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put my big head over that sun. I thought mm-hmm. it was just like you know how, coming out of here. Have out you guys ever noticed how many RCOs become four stars, dude? Like Corell is now the CENTCOM commander. Yeah, yeah. Clark's yeah. at CENTCOM. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like a natural progression. Hotel. Or something. Yeah, uh, McChrystal. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we we lived in a really we lived. Yeah. We, we were in and had a good time. It was it was, it was pretty cool, and it's. I think we had the right guys there at the right time. Um, I had a blast there. I tell people all the time. 
whether it was a deployment training, whatever it was, I had, that was the funnest time I've ever had that, yeah. that time I was there, man. Yeah. It was such a blast. Yeah, I got the people, so funny, you guys were there. I mean, it's just everything about it was just a blast. Funny, funny JD story at the 17th when, uh, Oh God, this could be, we were there. We were going, I think we were going to Arn Hart or we go to a pistol course or something. And, um, so we're, we're shooting and like, it's one of those days I'm like, I'm, I'm freaking shooting good. And we go, we go to get our, um, our paper off the, off the stand, off the target. And I'm, I'm like, for a second, I thought about, hey, I'm going I'm to keep this. I'm going to fold it up. And I remember, like, I really didn't know you that much, but you're like, you took it, took it from my hand, and wadded it up and threw it away with yours. You're like, you're supposed to shoot that way. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what awesome. You're supposed, what you're supposed to do. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah we need to have one of these, J.D., where we just tell stories about each other. Yeah, we dumb, can. And sure. the dumb stuff that we've done. Yeah, you know, I, I'll we'll do that next time. I, I was sure. telling the guys, I was telling the guys at the uh, at the seventeenth. I said, you know, there's a lot of books written about combat. I said, there, we need to write a book because there's a lot of funny shit happens in combat. Oh yeah, and that's that's never captured. Like I, I could sit and we can we could change names and you know to protect the innocent, but <laughs> you know, right, just from the guys I know, I, I can write a whole freaking book full of funny oh yeah shit in combat. Oh, man, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it was a blast. I mean, yeah, when you weren't, when it wasn't, you know, quote unquote scary at these certain times, I mean, the whole rest of it was just a, it wasn't even that scary. I didn't think, I mean, I don't know how you guys felt about it, but it was like, yeah. you, you're so trained and this is cliche, but it really is like that. Like when, like, like, I'm sure you, like when you jumped in that airfield or Matt, when you hit that idea, you just, you're so, you do those scenarios all the time. It's like, oh, yeah. this is what I do during this. That's what, when I was conventional, um, Looking back, I didn't have this this um, idea at the time, but um, looking back on my conventional days, I, it really is disconcerting to think about how ill prepared I was for any of that stuff. Like I, we didn't yeah. shoot hardly. We never, you know, we didn't do any cut, re react, you know, any drills. We did none of that stuff. And I'm like, 100%. man, I gotta go into combat as like a. Um, well, actually, I did. When I went to Bosnia, I, I was lucky I didn't get any kind of serious scrapes or anything because I probably wouldn't have been ready for it. I don't know. I mean, that's just the way I feel about it. I don't know how you guys feel, felt about no, it the time, but you're just yeah, like, I, I think you, Matt, you probably had a little leg up being at the 25th. Like I said, those guys are always squared away. And at the, at the seven, well, excuse me, when I first came in, I had some really good mentors there, but then I went to Korea and then I went to Germany and it was like, you know, how those overseas yeah. assignments are, you can kind of hit and miss whether or not you get any good well, training, but yeah, I was lucky too. I mean, I was at the 14th. So, you know, once again, 14th I had, also I had good example, the, yeah. process, the Mark Wallace, the, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like I had a bunch of guys that older, you know, Kenny Lindsay, these that had come out of, right. out of the regiment. So, so right. I, they, they kind of bred that, that mentality into us, which, yep. was, which was good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. But yeah, you're right, dude. I mean, cause I, we've all been to the, we've all been to the other, units where you're like jesus man you know? exactly it's and no hit on them i mean they don't they only know what they know but man it's yeah it's it's like i said it's disconcerting to the, i think it's i think it's changed i hope it's changing it seems like it is you know now that you know guys are becoming jtacs as soon as they you know we yep. have the schoolhouse now so they're all under the same wing they're adult, exactly like, something we all talked standardized about for years yeah. and years like hey man you know st's been doing this for years why can't we do it uh, right you know so so I, I think you're going to get, you're definitely getting better products at those units. It's just, no, oh, for sure. Can those guys maintain it and keep guys motivated to, you know, and, and hopefully those guys are, you know, one of the biggest things we saw, JD, you saw it. Um, once we first started recruiting for the 17th and we started having a no kidding assessment selection. Yeah. We couldn't get anybody to come out, man. So, I know. You know. It's true. We tried to hire yeah. like 20 yeah. dudes and We'd have like four guys, guys show up. Yeah. Nobody wanted to talk to talk. Nobody wanted to step up. Yeah. And, we get like five guys show up and two guys have failed the PT test the first day. You yeah. know, and you're just like, it's like what? What's what, going what on? You, I know. It's, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of that uh, you can be, a lot of it's just, there could have been fear, maybe like a little bit yeah. of like uncertainty, not fear, but like, I don't know how it is. I'm kind of comfortable here. They didn't want to get out of that zone, but also just the, the word didn't get out. I don't think the way yeah. it should have, like they hear, they hear selection. They're like, Oh man, that's not for me. But, it could be for you. You know, I think yeah. if we would have had well, the opportunity to, to kind of recruit day, to this day, it's still the most deployed unit in the air force. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Right. Like they've already, they've done articles on it. It's, they, I, they, but that's a great since, point. Since, since 2001. Yeah. Remember we, we, we left right after September 11th. Yeah. yeah. It was like a month later we were there. Yeah. A little, a little less, 
I don't know when it was exactly, but it was like October. Yeah. And from then on, every yeah, exactly. That's why being an ops suit was such a sucky job because you never got a break. It was like you're always tracking comp, you know, battle track. Yeah. Oh yeah. Man, yeah. Job was, <laughs> exactly. Jets, I got a step. I got a dinner engagement here in about no worries, minutes. no worries. Hey, it's good talking to you guys. Um, let's yeah. do it again. I'll I'll set something up and I'll, yeah. I'll send you a link and we'll do it again. I can't thank you, you guys. This has been great. I, I it was great catching up with you guys. Um, I forgot how much how awesome you two were. So let's do this. Well, yes, let's hey, do it. JD, like I said, I've known you since you know I've known JD since he was seventeen. Yeah, uh, that's right. Went that's through right. tech school. So uh, so man, it's always great. I, you know, we we do a shitty job. If there's anything I can say, we do is that we do a job of keeping in touch with each other. Yeah, we probably need to we need to improve that and do a better job of it. It's, I think the good thing is, and it's a, it's a cliche because everybody says this, you know, you're, you're good friends, especially in the military. Like it took us two seconds after I logged in here, like we're already back. Like it's yeah. like, yeah. like we never, that's like, right. Like I just saw yesterday. Like yeah. yep. that's, and that's exactly. this level, like that's the level of respect I have for both you guys. And, and I always, always been that way. And, it's, and vice and it's, versa. Yeah. Same here. All right, guys. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll send you out a link. I'll we'll we'll get this together some uh, in the future some here. Awesome, brother. What's the plan for this? Is something that you look at doing? Yeah, I'd like to do it. I'd like to do it with different people and like you know have you guys back as much as possible. Have like you, I'd like to get on here. Anybody we mentioned, anybody that's young that can tell us about the new way that things are going. You know, without getting too unclassified. But I'll I'll tell you guys before before we go. If you you can get Matt Davis on here, Matty Davis. Yeah, I, I will unequivocally say that he is the best JTAC I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, I'd love to have him on here for sure. That dude, that guy is, I mean, he is smart on so many different levels and just such a, I mean. So I gave, him, I gave him his first, uh, Matt Slack was there too. I gave him his first check ride when he first got the 17th. When he, he came over straight in as a um, RD. And, um, He's I always call him Matt Jr., me and Matt Schleich Jr. <laughs> um, but when I showed up, he had he didn't know where in, in, in the vehicle I wanted to sit. So he had a screen and everything set up in the passenger seat and then one in the passenger seat in the second row. Um, he had maps for me like he had like it <laughs> Just was everything ready. Awesome. Yeah, I'm like that sounds like mesh like too. Yeah, yeah I'm like, <laughs> dude, he's like just I thinking it two that. two levels or two steps ahead than the from the yeah. evaluator. That's yeah. per, that's the way. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was it was it was awesome. And he yeah. he told that story at um at the at the, the 17th reunion, and, and oh, I nice. almost forgot about that. I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> yeah, and he's like, yeah, man, like was there too, laughing. I'm like, yeah. I said, uh, <laughs> I remember now. I said, you you're you're famous, like Junior. That's what I always called him. <laughs> yeah, I. I, I Next time I'll tell you a story about him, man. That guy, I, I was able to, you know, cause I was going overseas a lot uh, with what I was doing for uh, mag. And uh, I walked oh, yeah. into the doc to, I walked into the camp alpha jock to introduce one of my guys to, to him. And that dude was literally talking on the phone, moving. He was talking on the phone, coordinating something. He was controlling MQ nines about to do a strike. He was talking to the RCO at the, and he's moving tankers. He had like, and the whole time he's having a conversation with me and Eric, like, dude, man, it's good to see you guys. How's it going? Oh, hang on a second. Yeah. And <laughs> go ahead and reposition. Just a here. cool so, character, man. Just dude, a cool, I mean, calm, collected. Was, I, it was multitasking to the nth level. <laughs> and the whole time he never, never changed in voice. He ended up, you know, ended up smoking like four dudes on a, on a mission the whole time. And he's like, he's like, got cleared hot. And he's like, turns back. In fact, it's cleared hot. And he's like, turns back around. Yeah, boo, boo, boo. you know, just I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what's what's happening? But the guy with me, Eric Trich, we walked out of it. He goes, I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. Like, that guy was so it. cool and casual, talking to everybody and then killing people simultaneously. Hey. I was like, I know it's pretty awesome, isn't it? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> so definitely get him on here. Yeah, for sure. I will. And I'll, uh, yeah, definitely. All right, guys. All right, JD. Brandy, See you next time. See you guys, man. Yep. See you guys. Bye, See you.